So, can you give your money to a bookie and not gamble? Well, you'd be surprised to hear that the answer actually is yes. Yes, you can. Through something called match betting, it's possible to know your profit before an event even starts. How? By using two bookmakers' offers against each other. You know the offers. Sign up and get a £20 bonus here. Sign up and get a £40 bonus there. You can use Profit Accumulator's website to find these offers in seconds and use them against each other to make a steady profit each month. So what do Profit Accumulator do and how does it work? Well, it works with something called match betting. Match betting allows you to put a bet on multiple outcomes of an event and come away with a profit using their advanced algorithm and system that you can access for free. The best thing is they have a step-by-step -step guide when you sign up on how to make a steady profit each month and they will even help you pick the best bets. Check out their free trial in the link below. Very fancy. Hello everyone and welcome back to another edition of West Ham Fan TV's Friday Night Pine. Uh, the boys are all here tonight. Nicky, Ryan, Graham and Scotty all here to entertain you all evening. Thank you very much for everyone that's joined us in the live chat already. Um, how's your week been, boys? Good? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Not too bad. How about yours? Yeah, okay. Not too bad. Hmm. Yeah, same, mate. Mine ain't been too bad either. Right? Yeah, yeah, all right. Thank you, mate. Yeah, been a yeah, good week. Brilliant. I hope everyone in the live chat has... Uh... Can you hear me all right, yeah? Using new microphone? Yeah, mate. Yeah? yeah. yeah? Um, all good. Let's get straight into the... Uh, let's forget the nice it is today. Let's let's get straight into it because this but this thing has grinded me a little bit. This, uh, this, this pricing for the UEFA League. Have you all seen this, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. So let's, I'm going to get the pricing up right now. Could have done this before. Um, I've had a look on the website. Obviously, I was looking for Kidderminster tickets. So the Kidderminster tickets um, were coming thick and fast. Um, the Kidderminster game was coming thick and fast, and they hadn't put any sort of details up the tickets. I was checking back every single day to see um, uh, to see when the, when the tickets go to sale. So just before that, I noticed that the UEFA Europa League games got on sale now. Why it's going to sell, we ain't even got through the, the round of 32 yet. So I thought to myself, oh, that's, that's early, isn't it? And it's open to season ticket holders and everything. And then I clicked on a price. And oh my God, I have never seen a bigger joke in all my life. Now, for one, I think it's a bad strategy from the club, seeing as they haven't signed anyone in this transfer window. There's always going to be these questions. And for two, what happened to this promise of affordable football? Well, the thing is, as well, you can add number three to that, is that we don't even know who we're playing. We don't even know who we're playing, yeah. We could be playing at Barcelona or Borussia Dortmund, or we could have the lowest-ranked team in the competition. Um, yeah, I mean, the cheapest ticket for season ticket holders is 35 quid for band five. You know, we paid 75 quid for three games in the group stages. So, yeah, it's, it's not a great move by the football club. And as you said, they've put a little bit of pressure on people buying their tickets because you've got until, like, the 7th of February if you want your own seat. Right, that's giving you a lot of time. Mm. Bearing in mind, that's like six weeks before the next game that we're meant to be playing. Or even longer, because yeah. the away game might even be on the 10th and the uh, home leg might be on the 17th or whatever it is. So, yeah, it's a, it's a bad move by the club. I don't know why they've done it. They could have left it till... I can understand if they'd done it at sort of like the end of February or something. But, yeah, I don't know, mate. I mean, our seats are going to cost us about 45 quid. Um, and as you say, mate, they, they promised about affordable football. I thought the club done a great thing with a free game deal during the group stages. 20, 25 for mm. the game it worked out for European nights. Well worth it. But now they're going to start bumping the prices up. But look, if, if if we do get drawn against the Barcelona or Borussia Dortmund, you know, 35 quid still ain't bad. 40 quid still ain't bad. But then you go into the 1966 seats and it's like 70 quid a game. It's ridiculous. Mm. 65 yeah. quid, 55 quid. The thing is, they the, the thing is, they know it's. I mean, last time we was in the you know, the last 16 of a European competition was 1981. So they know they know people are, are probably going to stump up the money, don't they? Yeah, as football fans, we will, we will do mm. that. We'll, we, we'll sit there and moan about it, we'll still <coughs> it, but it's not right. No, that's the thing. And like you said, the timing of it, the fact that we don't even know who we're playing, 
mm. is is the big thing for me. You know, what what why do they need to sell put the tickets on sale now? You know, the, mm. the next round still needs to be played. The draw can be at, go, the draw needs to be done, then sell the tickets. And that's what I don't understand. Yeah. To be honest, I've not got a problem paying the price for for what we are, because it is the last 16 of a European competition. Like Graham said, we ain't been there since 81. It's the timing for me. It's just the wrong time to be trying to flog tickets for a game when, like you said, you could be playing Barcelona or you could be playing... Sheriff. Yeah. Yeah, Sheriff. Sheriff. You know, and <clears throat> again, that's probably the only point you can say with the, the pricing. Yeah, it is the last 16, but when you're playing the likes of Barcelona and all that, look, they hike the prices up when we play the likes of City, United, Chelsea and all that. So they, they were always going to do that, but it's a big difference paying the money we have to pay to play Barcelona or paying that sort of money to play, like Nicky said, Sheriff. You know, it, it's... I don't, I, well, I don't think, to be honest with you, I, I don't. I think, if I'm right in saying this, I, I believe this is the most we've ever paid for a cup ticket. Do you know yeah, what? So, I've just literally, sorry, yeah. mate, I've just literally got it up on my phone and it is actually, they've scheduled it for Thursday the 17th of March. So they hmm. must know that for, we've got the away leg first. So why are they doing it this early? That's like what seven weeks away. Seven, yeah, seven weeks. But uh, I mean, it's not, it's not that right. So this is the most money we've ever been charged for a cup ticket. So I have got the prices here: band five, thirty-five; band four, forty; band three, forty-five; band two, fifty-five; band one, sixty-five; uh, and nineteen sixty-six, seventy quid. Now for under sixteens, uh, for OAPs. Uh, 70 quid in the 66, 35, 35, 30, 30, 20. Uh, same oh, you'll, be, you'll be all right with that one, Gray. Uh, <laughs> same, same across the board for the under under 16s and under 21s. Oh, no, under 16s is a bit cheaper. So it goes 15, 15, 20, 20, 25, 70. But you're talking about, say, let's go. We're going to go in the middle now, bound three, yeah? Because that's probably about average. So 45, 45. Uh, 20. It's £110 for a family of two with one child. But uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, Nick, I know what you're saying there, mate, but compared to other Premier League sides who are in European competitions, that's we're quite not, cheap. We, we're not comparing ourselves to other Premier League teams in European competition. This no. was a, a factor of moving yeah. to this stadium. This but, is not affordable football. But if you're paying up over you... get the fuck down. If you're paying up over hundred pounds, yeah, to go to a game with one child and two adults, it's not affordable. But that's not affordable. That, it's not affordable. Yeah, I, I, I'm not disagreeing, but the club will look at it compared to other sides. That is affordable football. No, it's that's not. That, you know, but that's 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 you know that's that's how that's how they're going to look at it. You know, if if your Arsenal, well, how, can, how can they right look at it like? like how can they look at it like that? When, 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 how can they look at it like that when uh, a band four, a band three, sorry, is twenty pounds for a ticket for a, for mm -hmm. a child? Yeah. Yep. A season ticket is a hundred. Oh, I know. I know that. <laughs> I know, mate. It is. It is. It is ridiculous and it is crazy the way they do the pricing. But it's just when you look at on the scale of other clubs that are playing in Europe, it's affordable football. Your English club, I, I, no, I don't agree, Scott. I don't agree. It, they, they, they don't have to charge this because I've done some sums, right? Mm -hmm. And for um, this leg of the UEFA Cup, yeah, mm. we, mm -hmm. we're going to average it out at forty-five quid um, for, for each ticket, sixty-five. We would earn over two point. Seven million pounds for this cup game. Yeah, that's if you if you average it out because you're talking about sixty six is seventy, band one sixty five, and you can, I know the kids are lower and all that sort of thing. But we are okay. Let's just say conservatively, <coughs> we earn over two. Hold on, Scott. We earn over two million. I can see you saying something. We earn over two million pounds for this cup game. Now I understand the club's got running costs, blah 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 blah, blah and all that sort of thing. But these are bonus extra games. Let's just pay our rent for the year. That's exactly what I was just going to say to you, mate. And that's that's how, that's unfortunately how the club will look at it. You know, they 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 would have done their research in what what they can charge. 
and what and comparing to other teams in European competitions. I know people were saying in the chat, and I know you said we shouldn't be comparing to other teams, but it's the way the market works. You know, you, you're going to compare to the other teams that are performing in Europe, and they're going to look at it, well, if we say an average price of 45 quid, that's not a lot of money. But, but you've got to factor in that the likes of Arsenal, Chelsea, Man United, Man City... Mm-hmm. They all have the price of their stadium to pay. They've all got to pay oh, yeah. their money. <coughs> costs. They've all got to Mate, pay. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not, they're, they're, I'm not they're, and, and most of them clubs. Uh, all right, there's a couple, but they're, they're, you're seeing sort of world world class superstars throughout the team, and we're yeah. not. Whoa, 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 whoa! Hang on a minute. Declan Rice, Bowie, yeah. world class. No, so, um, yeah, world class. Declan Rice is world class, but we're not seeing world class talent across the board. Yeah, but these these teams like Chelsea charge like ninety five quid for some of their tickets. They're playing in the Champions that's, that's not even the highest price either. No, no, I understand that, right? But I, I still think when when you've every other cup game and the strategy they've used for every other cup game has always been to lower the price to affordable mm-hmm. twenty five quid or something like that. I think that's what we paid for the last one, and I even thought that was taking the piss a little bit. Um, what, 25 quid for a game of football in Europe? Yeah, because in, in other cup games, in, in, in against bigger teams than that, they've charged £10. Pounds. £15. Pounds. The but thing, it's, but it's, yeah, but I think it's could be... Not, that's, the thing is, like, that's, that's FA Cup winning that every year. We're not in Europe every year, so they're just banking on the fact so that what? the fans are going to be so up for it. So, so, so they're going to pay the money. Yeah, but we, we, we will pay the money. But I'm just saying, like, I, I, it just doesn't stick well we, with me. That's all I'm know, saying. It's, it's, it's a catch-22, isn't it? Because if you don't buy the ticket, someone else will. And you lose, but you lose can say that about any, any game, yeah. any football. Exactly, yeah. That's, 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 that's the thing. And, and the unfortunate thing, Nick, I, look, I'm not... This, as much as it sounds like I'm... Dis, I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying, but it's that the club look at it that this is an opportunity to make money. And as much as we hate that they're doing that, it is a business at the end of the day, and they've got to get extra revenue from wherever they can. You know, this, well, they like they're, said, in the, this... they're in the cup. They give them extra revenue. The TV <laughs> yeah. money gives them extra revenue. Of course, they does, don't have. Then, no, then... I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, Scott. Then, I'm sorry. Then, I'm not having then, it. I'm not. Then... No, Scott. I no, am no, not no, having no, wait, this. Wait, 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 because wait, they can extract say? money from sponsors. They can extract yeah. money from the TV companies. They yeah. can extract money from extra shirt sales. They can extract money from extra. You know. Concessionary sales. I don't know whether they they earn anything from that. They also going to pay their rent for the. There is no need to 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 tip us upside down as well. There is no need Nick, for that. Nick, the only surprising thing about all of this is that you're surprised about it. No, I'm not surprised about <laughs> it. I'm angry about it, Graham. There's a, there's a there's a complete opposite difference, but there's a difference between being up, surprised by it and upset by it. Mm-hmm. But it, it's what they've the, the last few years. I mean, think of the times when, um, like when we played Man City or something. It's been like 65, 70 quid a ticket because it's a band A game. And, and, know, and also, they've, band always, band they've always done it. What did you say, Gray? A band aid game? Or category A, whatever. <laughs> band A, category A, whatever you want to call it. The thing, the, the thing is, is that it's when they promise to fall the rule football. Right, they're they're looking at affordable football when they do affordable football is kids for a quid. Affordable football is the season tickets. They didn't turn around and say, look, we're, every game is going to be a set price. We we've always known that they, like Graham said, you had band A games, band B games, band C games. You've always had different bands, and over the course of a season, when you look at what if you're not a season ticket holder, the amount of times that we've had kids for a quid tickets start in the in the like lower band of seats for a tenner, things like that. That's affordable football. Yeah. This is just an opportunity, like you know, like I've said, this is their opportunity to make some revenue. You know, that covers the rent for a year. We get through to the next round, they charge another whatever it is for the last eight. That's that pays, the year that after the Christmas, you know, it's, it, it's a business. That's the unfortunate thing. And yeah. it, it, I just <clears throat> The thing is, mate, we'd have all like we'd all like to have seen the club stick with what they done in the group stages, and because yeah. I thought I, I thought it was reasonable, seventy five quid for three games of European football, I thought was was a good deal. Yeah. You know, I, I, I you know I got it straight mm. away. Look, I'm sitting here, I'm still going to get my ticket, you know, but I, I, I do understand it. They should have kept it, and it's not even. Yes, it is to do with the price as well, but it's it's the pressure they're putting on you to get it straight away, like six seven weeks before this the game, is... and we don't even know we're playing. 
Yeah. See, the thing, the thing is, this month for a lot of people, this is a tough month. Yeah. You know, no one's yeah, got. It's just after Christmas, isn't it? January, yeah. like a lot That's to pay out. Um, I've got no spare revenue. I've got no spare cash to buy my ticket before the fifteenth of February. So I'm going to have to go and borrow the money to be able to pay for my ticket because this 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 month's a tough month. It's that type of month where you know you've just had Christmas. You're getting over that. Fucking some, Scott, some Scott, people don't right? borrow the money off of Sullivan, mate, because he'll charge you double <laughs> no, but, interest on so, that. You know, you, you've got you've got like. I know with Nikki and Graham, where they used to work, they get paid before Christmas. So you then you've got like a seven week period before you get Same paid. And I just think the tight the thing for me, the timing of it is absolutely awful. And I think that what they're preying on is season ticket holders don't buy their ticket. That's what I think they're hoping. I'm thinking they're hoping that the season tickets don't, and then that is when they start generating more review because you get fans coming in who don't normally get to the games. Fans coming over, as we've said before, with um, like the, the American fans and, and fans from abroad who then will go to this game. This is a European night. This is West Ham in Europe. They're going to buy, a, you know, they're going to bite your hand off for a ticket for this game. And then they're going to go in the club shop and spend the money. That's why I feel that they've done it this early is that they don't want that. The, they don't want season ticket holders to get their seats. They want to roll out. I, they want, they I, want think, that, to, I think, I think, I think they're preying on the fact that. I think they're preying on the fact that we could have Barcelona. We could have Borussia Dortmund. Mm. If it's once it's confirmed, then we know what we've got. And we could have Barcelona. We could have, you know, Dortmund. But we could also have Sheriff or some, you know, some poxy other team from, you know, the arse end of nowhere. I'll, I'll be honest with you, mate. I hope we do get one of them arse end of nowhere teams so we can get through. No, yeah, but, that, but, saying, no, but what I'm saying is, is that is that, that I think that is why they're doing it this early. It's a strategy by the club. I think it's disgusting not knowing who we're playing. I think it's disgusting. Maybe I'm coming down on it the wrong side. I'm, I'm, I'm angry about the pricing and you're angry about how early they're asking you to book it. So maybe I'm coming down on it in the wrong side. I think, I well, think I'm both. angry about I'm angry about both points. So Graham, what are you angry about? Make <laughs> make, a, make a third one. Uh, I'm angry. Well, I'm angry the about the fact that they, they, they put them on sale so early without knowing who we're playing. You know, I mean the the, the money thing. You know, the, this not just us, but Premier League fans in in general have always paid over the odds. I just I know we're not putting <clears> comments up yet, but this is a good point. Steve says, here, don't they have to pay the LDDC extra for the hire of the stadium due to games they are allowed under their contract? I'm not sure how that works, whether it is something that we need, to, we have to pay extra for, or whether we pay for the year no matter how many games we have on. Be interesting to find that, that be interesting to find that out. What is, what is the situation with these extra fixtures? Is it that the rent is for um August through to September? Um, August through to May, sorry, or is it a certain amount of games and then we have to pay extra to hire the stadium? If you, you know, do you know what I mean for the extra fixtures that we get involved in? Yeah, but if you rent your house, Scott, and pay a year up front, you can have as many parties. Oh as yeah, you want <coughs> yeah. No, but what I'm saying is, it, it's ask like, Boris uh, Johnson. Well, I ask Mr. Johnson that he knows about <laughs> yeah. that. What's what's in the contract? That's what. That's the interesting thing to be. To, to I, see. I, I, but I believe there's a set amount of games. So if that if there is a set amount of games, then you can sort of see, again, from a business point of view, that why they're charging it and why they're doing it I'll early. Tell you what, if we do get through to the last eight, you'll see Gold, Sullivan and Brady outside with buckets collecting for the next round. <laughs> keep us in. Keep the lights on. Give us pay the rent. <laughs> hey, Scott, hear mate, hear Scott, maybe we should do what they what they do on Sundays. Make your way team pay. <laughs> <laughs> When you get a cup going, I think this is a, a this is a nice debate. I'm looking at the comments. There's some people that agree with me, some people that don't agree with me, some people that agree with Graham, some people that don't agree with Graham, some people agree with Scott, some people agree with Ryan. There's lots of different opinions, and I like these sort of debates and because that's, they that's are. What makes it no one's is right or wrong. That's right, Mr. That's Speaker. What... Please, Mr. Speaker. Please. <laughs> no, I, honestly, people are saying I, I got it completely wrong, man. You know, that's your opinion, but my opinion. No, see, I, 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 stick... I don't. I don't think you have got it wrong. I think, yeah, you're right. You're bang on with the pricing. I think we can all agree on the pricing, but I think what Scott's chucked in as well. He's he's chucked an ingredient into the bowl and he's mixed it up a bit, and and he is right what he's saying. I think we're all right. We're all trying to get to the same thing, and in the, the day, we all think. The ball have fucked us over here with this because for one, it's too early. For two, it's not affordable. 
Um, some people might look at it and think, do you know what, that is quite cheap. I'm happy with that. But then there are some people that think, do you know what, it is a bit overpriced. So, yeah, that's we me could, anyway. I'm uh, off. Someone I'm made off. a good point in the comments here. That's the second leg as well. And I think this is another reason why they've gone so early. We could be fucking 4 nil down. Hmm? By the second yeah. leg, we could be fucking out of it. Yeah, imagine that. Losing that's, eight that's what I like to say, a bit of optimism. No, I'm, I'm, <laughs> no but it's, it's, it's true, you know what I mean? Like, obviously, I, I don't know really what Chelsea do. I don't really know what Arsenal do. I don't support Arsenal or Chelsea or Man United or Man City. And we don't get in fucking Europe that often. I know I've been to watch Astragoo twice and seen us got beat by... I mean, I remember going to fucking into Toto Cup games and watching FC Jokerit and things like that. You know what I mean? I've never seen the likes of Barcelona and that. Maybe I'm just being a dickhead. Maybe I am. But I, that's just, you know... I, I have to react what for what I feel with my heart. And that when I first saw them prices, I thought they are taking the piss. And that is the God's honest truth. Mr. Speaker, order! Mr. Speaker, <laughs> order! <laughs> <laughs> let's have a look at some of the comments because yeah, this is quite an interesting let's see, what the, let's see what the people at Talk Sense think. Scott, I'm going to put you in charge of the comments tonight. Okay. Why do you always throw this on me? Like, what, you could have told me this at the start, and then I could have picked. Well, some just I just decided it. Just go back and <laughs> keep scrolling, 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 keep scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Anyway, Graham, why are Scott's going through the uh, messages, mate? What are you drinking tonight? I've gone for a Jack Daniel tonight, mate. I'm having it's Peretti, not Moretti. What? Per Peretti. What, what's uh, that? Italian. So some Italian Italian shit. Beer. I thought that was like an Italian. Aldi beer. Beer. But, uh, get him in, get him in Sainsbury's. It's very nice. I um I've cracked open the bottle of Jack Daniels that I bought for Christmas. <laughs> I finally got around <laughs> to opening it. <laughs> yeah, right. So got? Neil <clears throat> Neil says I paid nine thousand for two tickets in Club London. And we still have to buy our tickets at the high rate for these kind of games. Um, Steve, says, I don't mean to be rude, but it for Neil, uh, like for Club London and all of that sort of thing, they should be chucked in. You're paying mate, that much should. money. If you're yeah, paying that much money. If I'm yeah. right in saying, I know Arsenal season ticket holders used to get European games chucked in. Yeah, they did, yeah. And cup games as well, which was why they're, which explains why their season tickets are a lot more. But if you're getting four Champions League group games, as it was when they used to be in it, um, and the FA Cup game, so... Well, they yeah. used to get drawn against fucking like, the likes of fucking like Luton and shit, didn't they? Nah, that, mate, I remember the days when we used to get a cup game chucked in with a season ticket. <laughs> yeah, you're right, mate. Yeah. Free cup yeah. games, it was. Yeah. Free cup games. We, we used to, did we used to get a FA Cup game and a League Cup game thrown in for free? No, it was Standard. free cup games, regardless free of what competition. Games. Whatever free I'm come in. first, they're the free ones you got. Standing outside I'm the turn. Yeah, coupons. Yeah, yeah, looking at, looking at what number was up on the board and you had to rip it out your season ticket. <laughs> <laughs> Stevie says, Scott is right. It's an awkward time to be asking for money. And Nick is right about asking people to stump up before they know who the opponents are. Uh, do, 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 do. This is compelling. Sorry. As I said, I'm, I'm thinking it. If someone can read them out and I put them up, it helps me find them. Go on, Gray, read that one out for me. Uh, was it not we paid more if we done well in the league and if we got into Europe or am I wrong? Also, I agree with all of you to be honest. No, I don't think so, Chris. I don't think that was the I don't think that was the contract. I think it was affordable football. I think that when we moved to the stadium, it was like we're going to bring affordable football all the way through. Unless we start doing well in the competition, then we're going to start fleecing you again and asking you for it eight weeks before the fucking fact. Um, to be fair though, I mean, we might, they might be like, um, we might think they're over the top, but we don't get European football every season. So this might be the last chance we get to see a little bit of European football in Barcelona. At, um, I mean, it's not going to be the Barcelona of old. I mean, I'd rather be playing the Barcelona with Messi and all them. But now we're going to see like Adama Torre running at us again. God, you know. Um, Alex says they do not want us. Yeah, you know, he agreed with what we said about it. they don't want us fans at the bowl. They want Torres at the bowl. And 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 that's the thing, like we were saying before, that that is what that that's where they earn more money. You know, they earn a lot more money there, and um, it, it, you know, that's the crazy thing about it. Darren said, "Our owners promised and felt to deliver on a lot of things." Nicky, affordable football being just one of many. Do you think they're giving a flying f? 
about breaking promises. See, I don't agree with that a bit because they have a fall of a football. We've got the cheapest season tickets in the Premier League. You know, one of the, especially in the London club. So I think they've done, they've kept their promise on that. I, I was and they've never really, thought... they've never really raised the prices since we've been there, have they? I was always, mm. uh, you know, I was always quite, it's one of the things that I've, they did raise them, right? They did yeah, raise them. I'll go through that in a second. Well, I'll tell you in a second. Um, but I've always been quite complimentary on the pricing of the tickets. I've always, I've always have. I, I thought, the, I've always thought that the, the pricing of the tickets were very reasonable. What I don't like to see is all of a sudden that we 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 have this sort of bit bit of success, and it's it's not like it's come through massive investment. If they were investing in the squad and stuff, I'd say, yeah, you know what, you know, what I mean, we're doing all right. We, you know, we're trying to push on, but it's. it's it, I, I think it was like. The management done well. The players done well. We had, we was very lucky with injuries last year, um, and we it, it's not like we've kicked on. We've just carried on this year, and now we're starting to slip a little bit. Um, and I, I, I honestly, in my heart of hearts, I don't think we're even going to get European football this year when I see what's behind us, unless we do something drastic in the next couple of days. But you know, it, it's it's nice to see West Ham in Europe, and of course, I'm going to pay the price. So, you know, we went over to 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 uh, Croatia and everything else, and. You know, it, it's nice to see European football, but I just think not knowing the opposition, asking for it up front this long, and then the pricing of some of it, I think it's. I, I don't think it's on. I don't think it's on. And I, don't, I think, you know, uh, if you're going to say affordable football, like all cup games, and they've been quite good with cup games, like you can get them for 10, 15 quid a, because they're extra games and they want people through the door. But. Mm -hmm. Asking people to stump up this sort of money when we don't know we're playing, we don't know, we, you know, really. I don't, I don't know whether that's, you know, just a conservative guess what they've put on the website. I don't know whether they know they're going to be away. I don't know, really know how it works. Um, and and the timing, you know, they've, they've put them on sale. I think there's Premier League games before that that ain't on sale yet. Yeah. I think it's a big tactic. It's a, it's a tactic because there's a potential um, before the next round, you know. You, you say Barcelona, Borussia Dortmund, and that could get next, knocked out by the next round. Hmm. That's it. That's, it's that's that's the big, that's, and that's, and that's, that's what, that's and that's why right. I think they're releasing them this early. Is because them teams are still in the pot. It's still a possibility. Hmm. Well, I've got a few more. JP Sloff says uh, there's a host of clubs around Europe that are fair with their ticket prices. It just seems to be in the UK that has higher prices. Prices for tickets. Uh, Kimbo says, totally agree, Nikki. They said affordable football. And now you've seen an earner and backtracked. B Rat Pack says, very true. Graham, these arseholes running the club don't give a monkeys about the punter. Try and find some that disagree. Nikki's overreacting. It's affordable given it's Europe, Europa League football. Uh, <laughs> Paulie says, maybe it's done because they're going to get players in before transfer deadline day. The bottom line is they will change that price because they know people pay it and ain't right. But that's the reality. Uh, where do 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 do? In silver. It says supply and uh, demand, Nick Simple. Remember, that's just a ticket. And you've got travel, food and everything else. It could cost more than 300 quid for a game. Ridiculous. Uh, that's all the ones I've got on there. I, I, I also do think that some, you know, the board level and everything else. And I've said this before. You know, it, it's I, th I find them very hard to gauge what is affordable. Mm. Sometimes, like some some of the some of the things that they come out with, and I think this is across the board. I don't think this is just West Ham, and I'm not just having a go at West Ham for it. But West Ham is my club, and that's who affects me. So that's why I, I sort. I'm not trying to pick on West Ham or anything like that. Even things with like kits and stuff, you know, it, it's. They they find it hard to gauge what affordable football is. They they, they find it very very difficult because mm. they're not a working class person. No matter how much any of them want to say, oh well, I come up through the streets and all that. You know, David Sullivan's probably got statues in his house that are more from one of my house. You know, they don't know what affordable football. Is. They don't really know what affordable is to 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 the person. You know what I mean? And thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, that, that 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 sort of thing. Sticks in my throat. You know, I'm not going to berate people because they're rich. They're rich for a reason. They've, you know, they've done very well in business and all that sort of thing. Yeah, they're, they're, they're rich be... because we keep putting money in their pockets. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and that's by, paying, sort of by, by paying the ticket pricing. 
Yeah, well, football isn't a, a, a big earner, but they, I, I just, you know, there's a lot of money flying around in football. There's a lot of money taking, there's a lot of money being taken out of football. There's a lot of money, you know, goes to agents now and fees are overinflated. You talk about hundred million pound players and all that sort of thing. That's their decisions. We don't, we don't set them prices. They set them prices. There's a lot of money being taken out of football. Uh, there's a lot of sponsors involved in football. There's a lot of shirt sales and all this sort of thing. They want to rip us off for shirts and all that. Nobody really complains about that, although I will talk about that in a second. Um, and, and But, you know, all this merchandise, you can buy a West Ham fucking condom, you can buy a West Ham bowl, you can buy a West Ham spoon, you can buy a West Ham anything. And they, they, they take a lot of money out of, you know, players, agents and all that sort of thing. That's within their realm. They're the ones discussing that. We, we're not asking for them to pay them sort of prices. They're the ones agreeing to pay them sort of prices. The, the thing is, Nick, the way I look at you, like, look, in, in any other sort of industry or walk of life, if if you went in, into a shop and uh, wanted to buy something, you meant, oh, that's a bit overpriced. You know, I'm not, they'd, they'd go, well, you can go somewhere else then. Go and buy it somewhere else. You can't do that with football because you, you follow who you follow. You're not going to go and start following another club. So you, you just pay the money. I mean, we moan about it, but we still pay the money. Don't we? Yeah, that's it. It's, it's, that's the thing, though. This is the only real, uh, you know, sport is the only industry where you don't really have a choice. You know, it's not like you can change. Don't get me wrong. Some people do change their um, their allegiances to sides like the weather. You know, we've all, we've all seen it before. We've seen people turn up supporting Arsenal one week and then, of course, Man City win the Premier League. They're all of a sudden Manchester City fans. But your hardcore proper football fans who 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 follow clubs, you know, it, it's not, you know, you, it's a passion, isn't it? You know, you don't, mm. you, you choose your club, you stick with your club through thick and thin, no matter what, whether you're playing Premier League football or whether you're playing non-league football, it, mm. the club's your club. And and that that is unfortunately where they have got and, by the goodies. Yeah. And they know, they know that you will, you know, we, we all would, even if they went, oh, right, season tickets are going up like 200 quid next year. We'd still pay it, mm. wouldn't we? Well, the, the point of why, mate, no, I think it's that, point, because we have that's got what they, that's what they rely on is the, the loyalty of the fans. Because they know you're not going to go and support another club, you're not going to go, Oh, well, I'll go and watch like, another club for you know where the tickets are cheap. You're not going to do that, you don't, you don't, don't do that at football. Don't, that's fucking, that's don't tempt me, Graham. Don't you dare tempt me, sunshine, because I can change all this. I can change <laughs> this, I can go and support a lo local the Dagnum and Redbridge or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, what, what I mean, what, what I was saying is, is that they, they, they really have got you in the goodies. But what Ryan said there um, about you know they haven't raised the season tickets. They did raise the season tickets. They done this. They done. They done this weird thing where they didn't do it for a few years to make themselves look good, especially when we was doing bad. Oh yeah, um, no, I know they've raised the prices, but they haven't dramatically raised them, have they? They raised not... them by ten percent, and yeah, some, but... and in some cases, more. Yeah, but which is a lot. It was always going to go up, but it could have been a lot worse, mate. I mean, we've, we we pay four nine five for our season tickets. No, we pay five five five, I believe. Or five 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 hundred and fifty quid for a season. That's not bad. No, I'm not saying it's bad, but what I'm saying is, is that. They didn't go with inflation. What they done is they, they, they you know, they, they 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 sort of tricked you, really, because inflation is sort of two percent a year. And what they done is they froze it for four years, and all of a sudden they you have a ten percent. And in some cases, more. There were some there were some bands that was more than that. Um, I'm not saying it's bad at all, but they are, you know, they, they are slowly increasing them, and they, you know, at some point they will start to go. I think you'll see a more than a 10% increase, especially since COVID hit. Because when you look at the books during COVID, they done better not having us there than they did having us there, which is, you know, mind boggling. Oh, obviously they lost out on, on merchandise sales and, you know, catering didn't really bother them because they don't get the catering money. Um, mm. But merchandise sales were down, but all in all, we made more money not being there because the TV companies pay. And this is what I'm saying. There is so many, different avenues you know you see sponsors you see you buy a program there's 20 sponsors on the bottom of the thing they're all paying the club money they're all paying them you know raise their sponsorship price don't keep on tipping the fans upside down because there's only so many times you can do that there's only but, so but many I, times 
sorry, mate, but you, you, you say there's only so many times, but they can do it as much as they want because people will still come. And that, and that 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 is the unfortunate, as we said, you support the you support the club. You follow the club through thick and thin. You will pay. But that, Scott, it. see, see, you're, you're upsetting me a little bit because you're you're you're, you're sitting sitting there saying, look, well, we've got no power. We can't do. It. We have got power. But we, and and that's you know, if you get together, uh, the, the, you know, the, the fans have got the, the you know the voices have got power. Yeah, the voices. You're, you're, you're trying to sit there and tell me that we haven't got the power to do this. Yeah, but people are still paying it. People are still renewing their season. Yeah, tickets. yeah, they so are. But they're happy but, with they're obviously there will be, happy with the prices. But there will be a point. There will be a point. Um, where I, they're going to say no. I, I I don't feel these these are the prices that are, are, are the tipping point of the thing. No, they're know? they're not. They're not the prices. No. At the it tipping is. Point. Look, we we I think we can all agree it is a bit of a piss take with the timing, the prices being a bit inflated, especially not knowing who we're playing and stuff like that. It, but this isn't. It's not the tipping point that's going to say you know. The, the, no, they're, it's, they're it's not the, it's, it's not the tipping point, Scott. But if we didn't say anything. Oh yeah, mate. I totally, I, the thing is, I'm not disagreeing with you. <laughs> you know, I'm 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 seeing where you're coming from. I, I I'm not disagreeing with what you're saying, but as I said, we're just it, it's the unfortunate thing. We're just stuck that affordable football. When you look at the season tickets at the start of the season, when you look at games prices per game, it's affordable. You know that that that's just my that, that's where I see it, and yeah. I'm just looking at it from. Right. Can I just say one thing? You. Can I just say one thing? We're on, nearly mate. 37 minutes into this show and all we've spoke about is fucking ticket prices. Let's move on. <laughs> Let's talk about something else. Right. Because it was boring. Before we move on, uh, before we move on, I'm going to put this one up quickly. Oh, for oh, fuck's sake. Sorry. And then I'm going to move on. And I'm going to move oh, on. Got two tickets for the Wolves game at 55 each for Saturday and now it's moved to a Sunday. This is the other pain in the backside that with the tickets, the moving of the days and things like that. Um, and this one, Jerry Pax, and I thought I'd let you know that last week I did a super chat asking if there's any of you recommend to do it at Leicester away, and it didn't get answered. So I did see it, I didn't see it last week, but I see it today, and Graham picked up on it as well. Um, I would go to the game, that's for a, that's a start. I'd get there early, get down the counting house, yeah, get, get the down the counting house, have yeah. a fucking good piss up, go to the game, get three points off of the Foxes, get home, and have a good night's kip. That's what I'll do. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's, it's all right, that count. That's decent pub. Decent pub, that one. All right. mm -hmm. Are we moving on? Or? Yeah, you yeah, that's it. That's it, mate. I'll just, I just like to put the other one up. And I, I don't, I don't want Ryan to get angry again. I don't want to get angry. Prices in the 1930s to the 1940s. <laughs> the 19th. Come on, let's move on. Let's talk about saying decent, like transfers that we ain't fucking signing. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is, a, there is there is a rumor that we made a fifty million pound bid for somebody. For well, I heard today, yeah, like just before I come on here, that apparently we're we're putting in a a last bid, minute bid for Rafinha from Liverpool uh, Leeds. I the Brazilian. Be, he's not going to come to us. Well, mate, listen, European football. He can afford to play. Um, in London, you never know. Leeds need the money. It depends yeah. what they want. I can't see it happening. Early in the week as well, weren't we? We were sniffing around um, Calvert Lewin, weren't we? As well. I'll tell you what, I got home today. I sat down on the set here. I put Sky Sports News on the yellow bar, went across. It says uh, Andy Carroll signs for West. And I thought, oh my God. And it said Brom. And I was like, <laughs> I thought it was in West Ham. I was like, oh, my God. Because yesterday there was rumours going around that West Ham were in talks with an ex-England international um, that some people were saying was Jermaine Defoe as well. Uh, but when I see that, Andy Carroll signs for West. And I was thinking, oh, please say Brom, 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 Brom. And he said Brom. And um, <laughs> that's the most West Brom signing I've ever seen. I, I just wish Sam Allardyce was still there. Because I think they've got Dear Garner, Hugel, um, who else they got ex West Ham there at the moment? Robert Snodgrass, Andy Carroll. It's like 2018 West Ham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, who was our manager then? Pellegrini. Pellegrini, yeah. Pellegrini there. West Ham 2.0. Oh, mate. And they've nicked um, half our name as well. <laughs> is it possible that a £50 million pound for was Rafinha? The rumour is it's for, it was for someone called El Nesri. 
I believe. Hmm. Who's he play for? Do you know? <laughs> Sevilla. All oh, oh, right. I um I know it looks like the the Coletta card deal was very close, so I think it'd be a brilliant sign if we can get that done. Yeah. He's only twenty five. They've, they've yeah. apparently they've lowered their price for him as well, which is yeah, I think I think Vlasic has obviously played a big part in it as well because he obviously knows him. Um and yeah, it looks like if we can get him in, I think that'd be a brilliant, brilliant sign, a brilliant addition to the squad. Well, not only the squad, the first team, because he'll play alongside Zuma. Mm. Um and yeah, if we can just get him in and uh, do you know what at this stage now, I don't care if we bring in a striker on loan, I just want someone in to come in now. And 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 just be back up. No, no, not sorry, not back up for Antonio. Someone that's good enough to take Antonio's place in that first team. When yeah. how are you going to find him over three days? I don't know. I know we've been linked with a a twenty year old, a nineteen year old. I'd rather have a proven. I mean, Diaz uh, Blackburn. We've been linked with him. I, I see his goal. He scored for Chile last night. I mean, I would take a punt on him. Difficult now though, because obviously he's away with Chile. So. The thing, the thing is, you you look at you look at Newcastle. Newcastle was signing that um, the Brazilian midfielder, and the guy doing the he's out there. He's having a medical in Brazil. They're, mm. They've flown out there to oh, do yeah, it. Yeah, they can. These players, Scott, most of them don't even need medicals, do they? No, really? no exactly. Let's be exactly. honest. And that's the yeah. thing: it's the paperwork that needs to be registered by a certain period of time. But again, Fuck me, just, Andy Carroll got a five year deal, and he was like a box of broken biscuits when we signed yeah. him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just it's just. Um, <laughs> It's just frustrating because the length of time this is took. You know, if the guy from is it Seville is is Moise's number one tr- target, why weren't this done previous? Why weren't this done earlier in the window? As, a, as as we said though, Scott, January is always a tough window oh, because yeah, you look course. around the clubs, no one's really done business. No, I mean no, Newcastle. When, when, you look at, when you look at the Sevilla striker, uh, Tony Marshall's just gone now. That yeah. could have been what they were waiting for. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's what I'm that's, saying. That's, you, they're waiting to get someone in before they release their striker. So, uh, you know, look, it's going to be a mental deadline day. Oh, I yeah. Mean, it may actually be, be an interesting deadline day for a change. I can, I can, as I said earlier, I can still see maybe Jesse Lingard coming in. I, can, I really can. I can maybe see him coming in. Do you think it's going to be that good, Scott? I think so. I, I think there's going to be a few clubs who are going to be scrambling to get things through the door on deadline day. Maybe we'll do a fourteen-hour live stream. I don't want. I, to always... be, I don't want to be there at twelve o'clock at night though. We're saying, "Oh, the, has the paperwork gone in?" Oh, come on, come on. Get it, <laughs> get it done up o'clock so we can all have a relaxing night and just. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be um, uh, interesting. I just always think um, the January transfer windows. Like, no, it's. No club's ever going to sell their best players in January, especially if, if this club's fighting relegation or going for a promotion. So you always get the sort of middle of the road players. It, it, it's, I think it's the summer the summer transfer windows are the ones that really count. Yeah, but that's that's the thing. It's like with, with the Lingard situation. I know people are fed up with talking about him, but with with the fact that he wants to go, but Man United are being picky who they sell him to. Mm-hmm. You know, it, that's that's the thing. And like like you said, you can't. Clubs are not going to sell sell players if they can't find a replacement. You know, you're going to get the 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 only ones that are going to be going is like what you saw with Chris Woods at Burnley, where they activated his release clause. If if certain mm. players have got release clauses, pay that sort of money. And 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 this this is a pretty, it's, it's that not effect because you know, like Nicky said, uh, severe losing you a little striker, bit, Scott. so that opens a window for. Sorry. But you know, so that, that's, oh, that's the knock on that's the knock on effect that we've got. It, it, oh well we're gonna sign a striker, we've got to let get you know, we need to if we're gonna sell a striker, we need to get another striker in. And the problem is until a couple of clubs start putting money in there and putting players out there, it's then harder for teams to get players. And then, like you said, you know, you look at even even if we do sign go in for Rafinha from Leeds. Leeds are fighting relegation. He's one of their best players. Mm. You know, are they going to be happy to let him go? It's going to be ridiculously oh. amount, a ridiculous amount of money. And this again, where it comes to overpricing in the January transfer window. Yeah, but the, the, but but what I would say is Scott is that, and I said this last week, and I keep on saying it. It's not a new problem. We've had this problem for two oh, years. Yeah. It's been four transfer windows now. Mm-hmm. We could have done this, including Summers. 
So I would have assumed that they would have had something lined up. But I'm, you know, you know what they, uh, they say about assumptions, isn't you? Assumption will make an ass out of you and me. You know what I mean? But, <laughs> No, I don't, you shouldn't assume anything, should you? Yet, when it comes to West Ham, like, uh, like I remember when the transfer window. You know, I was saying in December, November, if we're around this position, we should have people ready to go on the first of January. Um, and it, you know, he spoke about it on the first of January. And he's like, "Oh, this is sort of caught us by surprise. Caught us by surprise. Fucking, it was like saying Christmas Day's caught you by surprise. It's ridiculous. It comes around the same, same, you know, same mm-hmm. time every every year." It's, I don't know. Yeah, it's, uh, look, at this point now, I'm just, if we can get Coletta Carr in, well, I think would be a brilliant addition. I know someone that we've been after for a couple of transfer windows now. And as I said, even if we get someone in on loan um, as a striker, you know, we need, we look, we all know we need a striker. We need a striker. And I think at this point now, we'll take someone just for the, just to come into the squad and add that little bit of freshness, someone to challenge Antonio. Because the thing is, Antonio's away with Jamaica now. He's got three games. He could pick up an injury. He played. He played uh, seventy-eight minutes last night, I believe. Mm. Yeah. So it's. I'm. Not, yeah. Look, deadline day is always. You're always nervous. You're always uh, when that yellow bar flashes up on Sky Sports News. You always get a bit excited, thinking, "Who are we going to sign? Who are we going to sign?" But is it us? Is it us? But yeah. Look, uh, the Coletta card deal excites me, and and another player we've been linked with, Nat Phillips. I'd like to see him come in as well. I would like to see. I him think come both in. of them will come in. No, I know, but if I had the choice, I'd probably take Nat Phillips. I like Coletta Carr, but I like Nat Phillips as well. I feel like Harry Hill then on a uh, TV Burt. <laughs> I like Nat Phillips. I'm like, Fight! No, but um, <laughs> yeah, no. I, listen, Coletta Carr would be a great addition. I think him and Zuma would uh, strike up a great partnership, and we've mm. already got Sufau and Creswell there as well at the back, and it'll be a solid back four. Yeah, I mean, I saw watch him on the um, on BT. Watch a bit of the, the French football now again. It does look uh, does look good. Yeah, no, it would be it would be an exciting signing, and uh, hopefully we can get that done. As Nicky said, they've dropped their price now. I think Marseille are one of them clubs that are struggling and need a bit of money. So I know we're after their striker as well. So maybe there might be like sort of like a double deal done now. Chuck Pye in for free as well. We can chuck him. We can chuck him on. We need someone to cut the grass. Is the centre back? Who's he, is he at Marseille? Yeah, and Marseille in the Europa League. Yeah, so he'll be no, cup tied for that. Out. They got knocked out. Yeah, but they played in it, so he'd be cup tied for that one if he played. Yeah, but we, listen, Dawson's like Maldini. <coughs> we don't need. No, don't no, need I'm, need just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking we're, 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 we're at a point where we can look at you know European cup tied players. If you if you can get Coletta Car in, I don't give a shit if he's fucking been arrested. Just get him in. Oh, no, no, yeah, no. I'll, look, I don't say not getting him in. It's just frustrating because then we, if we have the situation again where we touch wood, it doesn't happen. If we lose Zuma to an injury and we've got the same back line, I mean, the only yeah. thing is at the moment, I think Marseille, like, I think they're second in the in the league. At yeah, the but minute, if so... yeah, the, the problem is, is that the, the there is a bit of power within the players. You know, you know, this is mm. the unfortunate thing of football. Players do have a bit of power. And, you know, as much as Marseille are second in the French League, you're talking about coming to the Premier League, coming to London, playing for a side that is is in Europe, you know, as much as he can't play in Europe. But it, it's still the prestige of that. You know, there, there's a big draw um, for for foreign players to the Premier League. And and that 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 is a massive, massive selling point. Mm. You know, that, that's, that's how you got to look at it. And and it's the thing, but like I said, yeah, yeah. someone just made a great point there. We're going to take some comments, and Scott's going to star them as they go. Um, I've starred some, uh, but they're skint. Who Marseille? Yeah, they're they're fucking broke, mate. There you go. So that, that's it. So they they'll take the money because I'm sure didn't they sort of knock his price tag down a bit? You said that, yeah. Yeah, I think he was. I think he was about twenty five, and I think he's gone down to fifteen. Yeah, <laughs> Sullivan the money. Sullivan thinks he's in Dagnar Market. He's going, oh, I'll give you 10. Go on, here is a 10. Here, um, yeah, they are skin, mate. Skin. 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 I think the thing that I find amazing is is Barcelona at the minute. You know, still managing. Oh, to find, you know, they're still on Torres from City, but he can't play. I'll they're tell you what, though, 
I'll, yeah, well, I'll tell you what about Tiore. Fair play to him because he turned down 120 grand a week yeah. to go to Spurs to go to Barcelona for about 15, 20 grand a, a week. You know, mm. he was he, he was part of Barcelona. He, he signed to, uh, he went from Barcelona to Villa, didn't he? So he was at Barcelona a few years ago. Um, a few Spurs fans laughing at us last week that we couldn't get our targets. And then all of a sudden, all their targets gone elsewhere. Well, and that, that brings into, um, what's his name? Conte. I, I, I really think he's going to walk in the summer. They're not backing him. Nope. Um, they're just basically mm. saying, there's your tools, deal with it. And he, he ain't that sort of manager. And I think United, I think the United job, if Solskjaer would have gone a little bit earlier, he'd be United manager now, but they've yeah. got... Well, the, the, United, the, the thing is, the United job's there because that, that <clears> geezer's <throat> only on to the summer. And I'm yeah. pretty sure if he come available and they wanted him, they could just turn around and say, that geezer, go on in, off you pop upstairs now. Yeah. I think they want Poch though, don't they? That's their main target, so... Hmm. Um... Some of the comments. Uh, Nino, nineteen eighty-three. Morata is being pimped out by clubs on loan. Would you take him? Who's Morata? What the one that played for Chelsea? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, fucking right. I would. I'll take yeah. anyone. I was going to say. I'm, I'm thinking of the same one, the Morata. No, I thought, you was, I thought you was getting me a beer, Scott Morata. <laughs> Who's <laughs> the best <laughs> on the winger? What's his name? Oh, Lucas Mella. Mora. Oh, Mora. Mora yeah, no. I'll no, take no. him as well. I'll take anyone. I'm guessing this is when we were talking about signing uh, Rafinha. With, uh, I'd rather sign with Charleston. The thing is, Everton, Everton have got to um, balance their books a little bit. They've spent a lot of money. They're in a renegation dogfight. Mm. Richarlison, yeah. Richarlison is a really, really good player. Oh, yeah, brilliant. He's a really, Even, really good I remember player. saying about him when he was at Watford that he, we should have been looking in. But he went mm. Everton. I, mean, I know he was linked with uh, Calvert-Lewin. Uh, during the week, and I'm not, I'm not saying we was ever going to get him, but you know that that's he would have been a great signing, but nah, we we uh we wouldn't have got him. The thing, the thing, the thing with Calvert Lewin, he he does he fits the bill, doesn't he? Of um of the type of striker that we're looking for. I would love Calvert Lewin. Yeah, I think he'd be. Mm -hmm. I, I think he'd work really well. Questions over his injuries. Yeah, but I don't but, think I still I don't I, I'd rather have him. Over than Tammy Abraham, yeah. Remember when he was linked with Tammy Abraham in the summer? I'd rather have him over him. Tell you what, though, mate, Abraham's doing well. He's doing really well, yeah. He's doing really well. Yeah, doing well. Right. Right. The, the right. Teams, I think that's the, the, the thing. Different players suit different leagues, don't they? Don't they? And I, I feel that Abraham suits that Italian football. That sums it up there. Look, <laughs> it was just about the cavalry's a ponce. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> if he Lee comes Barry, would you swap the Bambi Yang for Bowen? I wouldn't even swap the Bambi Yang for the Spanners. The bag of Spanners I've got down there at the minute. <laughs> uh, Andrew says, not just an option to get a strike, it's an obligation. Wrong leaving a good player like Antonio carrying the load. Um, and as Ahmed said, I think Moyes is asking for loan deals because he wants to ensure that if he buys a lesser target this window, there's no financial impact in the summer to get honest, the money honest. It's nothing to do with finances. We didn't spend any money in the summer. We've seen the books. We made three million pounds. I don't think uh, Car is the answer to the setback dilemma. Um, Gray, read that name for me. Uh, Josco Gvardio <laughs> would be a better <laughs> option. Uh, Steve wants to know: Will we do be doing a transfer live? I'm guessing he means deadline day. Yeah, we'll we'll do a couple of hours on deadline day. Not not fucking doing all day. Not fourteen. Not fourteen. No, definitely not fourteen. <laughs> Steve says, Ryan, I don't think Diaz would be good enough. Look at Armstrong, who's banging him in for Blackburn now at Southampton. He hasn't set the world alight. Uh, see, this um, is see. I, I sort of get the point with that. When you look at Diaz's goal scoring record, this is his, the only season really he started banging him in. So, but some players. Sort of start eating their peak up, start eating their prime, and find their feet a lot more. Listen, as I said last week, unless they get a chance in the Premier League to prove it, how good they mm. are, then we can sit here and say whether they're good enough or not. Armstrong's a good player. He's gone to South. Listen, he's gone to Southampton. Southampton haven't got the creative players that we have. So if Armstrong comes to West Ham, he might have a better goal scoring record. But it's one of them ones you, you just never know. But look, Every signing from the championship is a risk, but everyone we've made, barring Hugo, mm. worked out. Antonio, Creswell, Bowen. 
Yeah. The thing but is, Moyes Moyes would have done his own work on players. He'll know what what sort of players he's looking for, and he'll, he'll fit the way he wants to play. So you know, it won't. I, I don't think it'll be a, a gamble. He it, it, it'll he it would know uh, whether they fit him. Hmm. Jacob Peck said, "I love uh, Broja. I think he looks absolutely magnificent. Apart from Rice and Bain, he'll be a star man if he joins us, and I think he'll thrive in our system." Um, Frankie James says, I look at the gate winger, Itu. He, if we couldn't get anyone else, he looked decent down the wing against us. Mm. He, you know, he, he did, did. It quite yeah, lively. Uh, he was that the Japanese player? Yeah, yeah. He's I mean, in, well. in, the, in the away game, he was really good. Yeah, mm. caused Creswell a hell of a lot of problems in, mm. in both fixtures, to be fair. Uh, Dean says, Why do you think we aren't signing so far? Sean sure, Newman knows what he's doing, and Moyes trusts him. Is it Moyes not being decisive or the ball not stumping up the brass? Well, I sort of had this on, on the social the other day. It was like, who's to blame, the ball or Moyes? And I think it's a bit of both. But as we said last week, if if the ball are willing to back David Moyes, we know David Moyes likes to work with a smaller squad and he likes to pick the players that he thinks will improve the first team, not just the squad, but the first team. And look, it's frustrating for us fans, but if we was in Moyes' position and that's how he wants to work, then, you know, we, we just got to back him and trust him. Yeah, but there's working with a smaller squad, right? And there's working with, you know, tools that you haven't got. You know, you can have a you can have a small toolbox, but you ain't got an emma. You need an emma. You know what I mean? Like you, yeah. you can't replace an emma. No, I know that. But I'm, what I'm trying to say is that he he's he likes to work and identify the players that he wants. Um, it's he, he just he don't want to. How can I put this? He don't, he don't want to just put too much into the squad, like too many different type of players. Like he just likes to know, he knows what he works. He likes workers. He likes a couple of flair players. And that's how he's always worked down the years. Mm. He'd done it when he sort of went to United. Look at one of the first signings he got there, Fellaini, you know, because he knew he'd be a, a worker. He worked with him at Everton. Um, I'm not saying it's right. I'd love to see Moisey bring in about 10 players and let them all fight out for the first team, you know. But if that's how he likes to work, then, you know, as we said, we can only back him on that because he's done a great job so far. I think, mm. I think as well, it, 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 as we said before on, on previous Friday Night Pints, that he, he don't want to bring people in that are going to upset the apple cart. You know, who are, if they're not getting a game, are going to have a strop, are going to have the ump. And, and, you know, as I said the other week, with, with Southgate, with England, and it seems to be with us as well, there's certain players there that behind the scenes keep the other players motivated, keep the other go, players going. And, you know, bringing in the wrong attitude player will then cause problems within the dressing room. And as we, you know, we've said before, the dressing room at the moment is fantastic. Um, so it's, it's one of them, isn't it? Um, George says, I think Manuel bottle it on bottle Lingard on deadline day and we'll get him. I can't see that. Now. Well, I hope they don't bottle Lingard. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I just, that deal, I, I think it's right. It's, you know, it's, it's a shame because I think do, the kid... do, do you think the player wants to come, but man, you were stopping him to, from coming? Yes. Yeah, I, I think. Yeah, so I've, I've, I've seen that. I've, I think it's it's quite widely known he, we're his preferred choice of destination. I think he's turned down Newcastle. I think he's blatantly turned them down. Um, which then that tells me it's not about the money. Mm-hmm. Yes, mm. yes. Because Newcastle, yeah. Newcastle will probably offer a, a hell of a lot more than what we will. Yeah, um, it's, it's about ambition. He wants to come to a club where you know we're on the up. He was there last season. He knows the club. He knows some of the players that that, that were there last season. He knows David Moyes. So he wants to come unfortunate- in now and, and try to help us get into that top four. It's unfortunate because you know this is probably why he should have made the decision in the summer because we need we need him. Um, to come in and help us get into the top four. The thing but... is, mate, as I've said, as I said before, I think I don't blame him for staying at United in the summer because the way he played last season, Solskjaer might give him that little bit of hope that he might be involved more in the first team at United. And as we know, listen, he, he might have loved it at West Ham, but he's a United fan. He's a United boy. He's been there for so long. So I don't blame him for having that second chance. But now he must think that he's not getting the minutes. He's not hardly playing. He didn't even come on against us last week. Um, he's 29 now. He's he's at the peak of his career. He's got a good, what, three or four years left at the top? 
You know, this mm-hmm. is the time now to come to us and um, and show show the world and England and Gareth, especially Gareth Southgate what he can do. Mm. Do you, do you, do you feel that because of the lack of striker options, this is why we're so sort of not the club but the fans so panicky at this that that we've not signed no one due to the fact of we have just got Antonio and that's it. Mm. I think yeah, I think if, if Antonio gets injured, but I mean we've got players that we can, you know, we could put Bowen up there, and there's players that can fill in, but mm. it's not a, you know, it's not a, a sort of long term solution, is it? Mm. I think yeah, I think David Moyes does see uh, Bowen as a as an option, as Graham said, and and he, but it's it's not the right option, you know. We need an we need another out and out striker to. Uh, I, I was saying, uh, I was saying to you the other day when I Scott, you know, I, I think if we don't sign anyone, they, then we we'll, we we will finish outside the European slots this year because it will just catch up with us. I think we'll end up about eighth or ninth if uh, if we don't get some fresh legs in. It is as well. It, I know the system we play don't work it, but I think Bowen would work really well as a second striker. Playing alongside another player, do you know what I mean? Because he's, as I said before, like before, I criticised his his decision making in the final third, and he's improved that so much. But his movement, you know, his movement is quite good for a winger mm. like who plays in the striker's position um, when he's had to do so for when Antonio's not been there. His movement ain't, you know, he's is quite good, and I just feel that it sometimes, as much as our system's working for us. It's just nice to be able to have a backup system where we can go two up well, top. And I think Bowen would make a good partner for somebody. Yeah, someone's just said there that he's not a natural goal scorer, but he's not been played up front. And he's, scored, he's, only, he's our second top goal scorer playing mm. out on the wing. So yeah. mm. he's he done it for Hull. He played up front for Hull. Yes, it was in the championship, but you'll never know until you give him that run up front. Exactly. But yeah. I don't want Bowen to be the, the replacement and the answer. We want yeah. someone else in to... Um, well, that's it because you know, as, as much as look, we've got other good wingers granted, but he, Bowen's playing well in the position that he's playing. So you want someone else to play that striker role if we do lose Antonio to an injury to, well, keep, to yeah. keep Bowen playing where he's Bowen playing. I mean, speaking of Bowen, a uh, bit of good news coming out this week is that the club are going to offer a Bowen, Suchek, and uh, Ogbonna new deals. Um, good. obviously, mm. Ogbonna, we knew it was going to be a year deal, but Bowen and Suchek. They'll, they'll be great to tie them down for for longer yeah. contracts. Two important players in the first team, especially Bowen, because Liverpool are sniffing around. Um, and I, I would hate to lose Bowen because I, look, I like an old fashioned player like Bowen. He works hard up and down, gives everything for the team. Um, and yeah, I think it'd be great if we can we can get him uh, signed up to a new deal. And obviously, the the main one we want is Declan Rice. And yeah. um, I think the club will be working on something with Declan Rice um, to get him a new deal. Let's hope so. Mm. Let's really hope so. And that's the, that's the big massive. You know, at the end of the day, no matter what happens in this transfer winner or the next, I think if we can tie Rice down to a better con- a newer contract and a longer term contract, I think that would be just as good as signing another player. You know, before we move on, like we're covering the transfers and all that. Um, Brandon says, Scott thought, is that the same thing about players being cut time? Apparently, UEFA changed the rules regarding that. Uh, what about Diop going to Newcastle and getting Cletter Cart and Nat Phillips? I'll take that all day long. That I'll, fucking hell. I'll fucking drive Diop and pick, <laughs> pick Nat Phillips up by on the way home. <laughs> uh, Thomas said we must go for Jonathan Jonathan David. I'm a Canadian, so I admit I'm biased, but he'll get he'll be a great fit, great work rate, and can score with both feet. Go look at his goals last night for yeah, Canada. The, yeah, a lot of, lot of people have been uh, talking about him. Uh, I don't think that would happen in January, but definitely in the summer, I think that's something that we need to really look at because he looks uh, a decent player. He's um, got great potential, and yeah, we've definitely been excited signing him. Kem Amos says Lloyd, Lloyd Kenny is the Kelly is the answer at the centre back, but can't happen until the summer. I take a punt on Elijah Adebayo. Adebayo from Luton next to Antonio has all the, his attributes. Uh, right, Ryan Terence Crane says Ryan Archer, can you please read message out? Who's to blame for no signings? Uh, hello, Terence. Um, I'd say well, it's, it's got, well, it's got read it out. 
Yeah, I know. Well, I'm I'm sorry, Ryan. Ryan, can you? I'll read it out. Can you please <laughs> read message out? Who is to blame for no signings? Um, Terence, uh, I'm going to blame fifty percent Moyes, fifty percent Bald. I'm I'm doing a Scott, and I'm sitting in the middle. Sitting. I'm going to blame, blame Graham. Yeah, I'll blame Graham as well. <laughs> Oh, oh, my fault. fault. <laughs> Graham ain't done the fuck all this transfer window. <laughs> oh. Sorry, everyone. Nick, yeah, I think this one's for you, mate. Uh, he says, when's the podcast? Uh, the podcast will be re being recorded Tuesday and will be out more than likely audio <sighs> Wednesday and video Thursday. I tell you, they sound about Canadian players. None of you, will, none of you will remember Alex Bunbury. No. I think he played about two games for us. Oh, fuck, who was talking about a podcast? <laughs> <laughs> the fuck did you... Graham's on. Graham's on. Yeah, really bad about, like, scoring for Kenny. I was like, oh. Yeah, we yeah, had give it 10 minutes. Like, 10 you know, minutes to go. Give it, give it another 10 minutes. Graham will start talking about the ticket prices. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking diabolical. But a bang out of order. <laughs> oh. See, Graham, see, Gray, we do have a Canadian playing for us at the moment. We have a Canadian gold medal winner playing for the West Ham ladies at the moment. Yeah. Mm. See? What's her name, Scott? Uh, do you know what? I can't remember. I follow her on Instagram as well. But oh, I, I bet remember. you do. <laughs> <laughs> Craig Forrest was Canadian. I can't think of her second name. <laughs> in her second name, Leon. I can't think yeah. of her first name, but... Is it... I, I, He's know. got to look it up now. Look it up. Right. <laughs> just, just look up, Scott. You've probably got a poster on your ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> no, it ain't on there, mate. <laughs> Nicky Kelio says, that's a very nice big TV, Nicky, in your room, mate. How large is the screen, mate? Um, he's then sent a message saying, uh, what's your address? And where do you live? <laughs> <in the laughs> he's just asking for a friend. Um, no, it's, 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 not, it's not that big. It's, it's only like a 40, 42 inch, I think. I'll tell you what, when I went to, um, when we went Man United away the other last week, we went in Tesco's. They were doing 65 inch telly for 400 quid. I was going yeah, to like, have yeah, a shopping yeah. spree. But I'll be honest with you, I, I would get a bigger one, but because it's built into that, now to change it would be a real ball ache. We'll have to sort of rip all that out and rebuild it again. And no, nah, not, that's not happening. That's not happening, to be honest with you. It's okay the way it is. It's, it's pretty future proof, that TV. So, yeah. Uh, uh, so, a name, a name's there on the screen for everyone to see. Nicky, going back to the podcast, seen a couple of other comments. People were asking, what would a podcast, bleh, podcast be called and where would they be able to listen to it? They'll be able to listen to it audio on Patreon and the video will be on YouTube. There you go. Sorted. What else, what else do you want to talk about on this uh, Friday night? Bit of a curveball, right? But did I'm now sorry, we've we've go. all had complaints about this in, in the ground. Did anyone see in the paper, I think it was yesterday, about some of the worst pints poured at football grounds? Oh yeah. Did you see some of them? They were awful. No. <laughs> you know, I, 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 I see some of these things though, man. I, I don't believe a lot of these things anymore though I, I don't believe them I, I can't believe that somebody would pour a pint like that and then give it to them and then that person would then walk off away from the bar and then start taking pictures of it like you see Ryan sent me a picture the other week about like, I knew you were going to say that one that was pucker about cheesy chips right now don't get me wrong. someone's gone to a football one day and there's been some half ass fucking calf person that's fucking fried up a bag of chips and he's asked for cheesy chips. Um, and they, they've slapped a couple of, probably, it's probably like a newbie that don't really understand the concept and they've slapped cheese on chips. Right. But Ryan sent me a picture the other day where they, like, they've literally slapped a block of cheese on the chips. Okay. Like a block, block of cheddar on it. <laughs> yeah, like a block of cheddar on the chip. That ain't right. That, that's, that, they wouldn't do that. For one, the fucking cheese would cost them more than the chips cost. Right. And it's, it's going to be fake because people just, you know, they take these things to football. There is no way on earth that people are pulling pints like that. Because if someone pulled anybody a pint like that, would you not turn around and go, pull that fucking properly? I've just paid you £6.20 for that pint. Pour that 
a fucking glass of beer, that is a glass of phone. You would not walk away from that bar and start taking photos of it. I'm sorry, but right. you wouldn't. Nick, have you bought a pint at a London stadium lately? No. Right. Some of them pictures, if what they do now, they pre-pour the pints, right? Yeah. They do about three quarters of a pint and then they top it up. When you look, right? So but I know Ryan the other week went and got a pint, it was flat, and they refused to change it for him. But some of the pints that they put Wait, let me fuck off, Nick. Um, let, let me, I can see him smiling, but um, yeah, no, <laughs> I, but trust me, I've got my pint, Scott. That's it. But the, the fact don't, that they refuse to change it in the first place ain't right. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it's like a pint, you know, you got your pint glass, right? There was, there was some sitting on the side that had been pre pulled with heads like that. You know, it's, mm. it's, how, how, how hard is it to pour a pint? Yeah, you know, obviously, Hello, looking at some of the photos I saw in the paper, it's bloody ridiculous. Can I just say as well, I've seen Miss Amaret. She's been uh, in the chat all night, bless her, and she's been trying to get the likes. Look, we've got 622 people at the moment watching. That's obviously on Facebook and YouTube as well. But um, if you can give us a like for this show, it really, really helps us out. It helps show the share the video a bit more and gets our name out there. Um, so if you're watching right now, it don't cost you anything. And you know what? You can't even you well, you can hit the dislike button, but hit the like button, help us out, and um that uh keep Miss Amaret um happy. She does a great job for us. She does a very good job for us. She, she does, does a fantastic job. Chris Bill said it makes me sick, but the best pint I've had was at Tottenham, and the worst was at the London Stadium. <laughs> you know what though? I must admit though, like I don't know, it might be just our block, but the amp still. I actually don't mind it. It's better than Heineken. Yeah. Um, it's been, been I haven't had a bad pint over there yet. Um, it's been a while so, when we've had a minute. Yeah, it might just been, be a different yeah. part of the ground. I don't know if every bit does Amstel. I know. I think they still do Heineken at some some of the places, but... Okay. No, I'm just I'm just thinking where the best place. I mean, I don't really, I don't really give a shit about beer. So I'm not a beer person, like you know. what I mean, I don't. I really, really all. I had, what did I have at Man City the other day? Dark fruits, Man United. Sorry, Man United. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you enjoyed that as well. Huh? You enjoyed that as well. Yeah, I did enjoy that. Yeah, but beer, like, I don't, it all tastes the fucking same to me. I don't I, I, look. I've devised two shows, one of them post-match pint, and Ryan come up with Friday night pint. I don't even fucking like to drink a pint. To be quite honest with you, if, if um, truth be told. I'm just going to put this one up. Uh, Cockney uh, under five. Shout out to the Millwall boys for tomorrow, good lads. Yeah, I mean, Millwall obviously tomorrow have arranged for a, a clap on the seventh minute for a little while of Caton, um, who, as as you all know, sadly passed away during the week. Me and Nicky was at the uh, funeral today. Very emotional. Uh, very emotional. Great, great turnout. Um, you know the family done Isla proud, and you know, yeah, it was a, it was it was emotional. There was a lot of people there today, and there was a lot of love. There was a few Millwall fans there today. There was uh, flowers from Millwall fans, flowers from Tottenham fans, mm. um, and yeah, it was just uh, uh, you know, it was um, it's an emotional day, and me and Nicky mm. were both there, and yeah, it's um, it's it's a day that we we hope we'd never have to go to, you know, to go to any youngster's funeral you never want to do. But when it's someone that's close to your hearts and that's touched the fan base and not only West Ham fans, but fans around the world, um, mm. it's, yeah, it was tough. It was a tough day. And uh, there was met some really nice people today. Um, and yeah, we obviously went to the, I'm not even going to call it a wake because it wasn't a wake, was it? It was like a celebration, like a party afterwards with a family and, um, mm. Yeah, it was brilliant. You know, we we spent time with Isla's uncles. Uh, I'm close to Zoe, Isla's cousin, um, granddad Tony, uh, her, her mum Nikki, and dad. And um, yeah, it was a it was a very sad day, but Isla had a great send off. And um, yeah, you know, I've got she's... to say, just before, I just wanted to say a little something about Isla because obviously, I was I was going to wait to the end, but I think I'll, I'll I'll say this now. But there is very few people. Like when you look at social media as a whole, it can be like I get sick of social media over and over and over again. I look at it, the toxicity on it, and I, I include us in that. You know, I can be like that. Um, the arguing, um, everything seems to be negative. Now, when Little Wyler came across, we came across Little Wyler 
a good few years ago now. Um, it was something obviously that was that was close to our, our hearts and it was hot on the heels of the Bradley Lowry um story. Um mm-hmm. we all sort of suffered with 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 the Lowry family. Um and then obviously then it, it you know you're sort of watching that from afar and you're wishing him well and you you know you're trying to do your best. But then all of a sudden it comes and it's on your doorstep and there's you know someone in your community that is that is doing that and and going through the same thing. And, you know, I've never, and I, I mean this from the bottom of my heart, I have never known a braver person. I don't even know the girl, never met the girl in my life, you know, but I'll, I'll say why. But for what that little girl went through and the, and the way she fought, I don't think I've ever known a braver person than that in all my life. Because I know that the treatment she had and the things she had to go through in a in a in a very young life, and you know she was seven um, when she when she passed the other day. Um, but from two, from the age of two, I've seen grown men a lot bigger and a lot meaner than me and you being brought to their knees for the treatment that she had to go through, and and less than that. So what a very brave person, and and I want to, you know, a lot of the community, everyone that's gone out there. You know, and I know some people done more than others, but you know, when it comes down to the crux of it, it's you know anything you've ever done to raise money, whether you've given up time, you know, money, you know, people done these fun runs and they they got sponsors and everything else. Um, you should all be proud of yourself because there is an old saying that goes: no matter how rich you are and how much money you've got, all the money in the world can't buy a second of time. And that's what we we did um, as a community for um, you know for the, for the Kate and family is that we bought them a little bit more time and it look, it's nowhere near enough nowhere near enough and you know I would give anything to be able to to give them you know all the time that they need um, but you you did as a community raise that but and and a lot of people say you know and I, I see the family thanking us. And, and you for raising money and, and, you know, helping them, you know, buy them a little bit more time, which all the money in the world uh, can't buy that, by the way. Um, but we have to thank them, in, in my eyes, because they opened up their life in, in a time when it can be a very private and a very difficult time and sometimes like when you you see things like that you you just want to go into your shell and try and selfishly rightly but selfishly take all that time and 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 shut yourself away and you know i i I need that time with with my baby and what that family did um for the world not just us in this community but for the country is that they open up their life and they and they let us and they allowed us to be part of that journey. Yeah. And every single person that's seen that little girl, seen her grow from two, you know, to when she passed the other day. And we have to thank them because that little girl will live on through that choice, through that choice of 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 opening up their home and opening up their most private intimate moments to to the world and she will always be a beacon of hope and 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 show just what communities can do and the good that is in the community in football you see you see Millwall fans Tottenham fans Arsenal fans all of these people coming together for one person and she will always be a symbol and her name will live on through the, the rest of time I'll never forget Isla I never met the girl Never. I met a family, but I never got the, the chance to meet her. But because they opened up their their lives to us, we, we all feel like we know her. We all got involved in the community. And she will always live forever and ever and ever in the hearts of everybody. See, I um, I was lucky enough to, to meet Isla. And I, I knew about Isla before it was even made public. Uh, as I said, I'm very close to one of Isla's cousins, Zoe. And... Um, 
yeah, you know, I've been to every charity night. I mean, we I got all you boys to to come to the first ever charity event they done in Dagdam at the Roundhouse. And as I said to Isla's mum today, that night will always stay with me for the reason is that, you know, before West Ham made Isla more public and rightly so, that, that night at Dagnum, it was just pure friends and family was there. And there was over 500 people there that night, all there for Isla. You know, I've been lucky enough to play in the second charity game for Isla with I had Julian Dix, my hero is the manager. I'm playing with ex-players. And and you know what? As much as when people I say to people, yeah, that was one of the greatest days of my life. You know what? I wish that day never happened. I wish we never even had to play them charity games because the only reason we're playing is because Isla was suffering. And um, the family's been brilliant. I've got so close to them over the last few years. And um, yeah, it's, it's, um, it's tough. It's always tough when it's a kid because we've grown up and you've always seen stories like that. You know, and I'm not saying you turn a blind eye to it. You don't take no notice of it. But when it's someone close to you and, you, and that someone that you know, you know, it, it, it is hard. And uh, t today was, I mean, there was a moment today and I said to Nicky after, like, we were standing outside and, and Nicola went up and spoke. And it was a cold day. But as soon as Nicola started speaking, the sun just broke through the clouds and it just, the sun was just shining down on us. And it was like, I love saying, that's my mum. That is, I'm shining down on your mum. You know, and it was a, it was a, unbelievable moment and and nicola today uh michael the dad millie the big sister she's been unbelievable for all this and and um the whole family and all the football community not just west ham but everyone everyone's come together and as nikki said you'll never forget isla and one thing i'll never forget is as much as that little girl was suffering she always smiled no yeah. she was always smiling you know and i've seen nicola put videos up over the last few days and sharing memories of her and their memories always live on and and there was a bit of just before we left me and nikki was told something but i, I ain't gonna reveal it yet but it was a, a great tribute that's gonna come out um when when we're not it's not right for us to say it but but i, I want the family to announce it and it, it's unbelievable and um as i said isla's name will always live on and she's uh she's she was a beautiful little girl and uh she's got a great family behind her as well I think when you look at reflection today, I think, you know, she just brings out the good. She brought out the good. And it's hard to see that at times. It's hard to see the good. And what today has reminded me personally, and it should remind you, is that there is not enough time on this earth. And every day you wake up, you need to be appreciative of who you've got around you and what you've got. And whether you're you know, you've got a rift with someone or you just haven't phoned someone. Just remember every day is, is important and, you know, get close to people. That as, I, as I said to you in the car, mate, I said, like, we're sitting there on Saturday moaning about losing last minute to United, you know, Monday, normal day. And then it's just how quick your week can change. Tuesday, we get the news about Isla. And then on Friday, we're attending her funeral. Mm. It's just life is like that. And as you said, mate, we're sh it's a short we're, we're on only on this planet for a short time and we're lucky people to be on it you know so just just enjoy it and and it is like you 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 sort of appreciate what you've got in life and you know I've, i'm a father myself i've got a daughter and and you know i can't imagine i can't I honestly can't imagine what they're going through but they were so strong today the family and they'll probably have their moment away from everyone and rightly so um but yeah isla's a uh, uh you know as you said mate her name will always live on and um i'm sure as we spoke there'll be more charity games more charity events um because even though isla's not here she's still always with us and and uh, she she'll be let's hope she's smiling down on west ham this season and i know the club have got pl something planned for the watford game at home uh the tribute uh which will be brilliant and uh yeah god bless you isla god bless yeah. god bless her Right. Um, Scott, you got any more subjects? Or can we go ask us anything? No, mate, I think we're good to go ask us anything. Right? You got anything? No, no. Yeah. You, you, you say it and I shall deliver. There, <laughs> there you go. Uh, oh, Dan Powell says, I hope the West Ham team fair. wear some sort of badge, patch on their jerseys on honour of Isla for the rest of the season. Also, Maybe name something in another stadium after a stand or something. I hope that happens. Um, 
I'm sure they will. I'm sure, well, I'm pretty sure they will name something, but um, there's going to be a very nice tribute. You, you, you know, when it comes out, and it, uh, you know, it's not my place to say, as Ryan said, but uh, as football fans, we hate all hate on each other, but underneath, I hope and believe we are all decent human beings, and football doesn't come close uh, to being human beings. Total inspiration. God bless her soul. Mm. Um, I did. I, 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 I put all these up for you, Nick, when you were doing when you were. Oh, sorry, mate. Yeah, go yeah on, that's go. right, mate. Because you you were talking. I just because I saw them all going up. I put them up as you. Oh, where are they gone? Scott, Scott loves that star button, doesn't he? I can't see <laughs> it. No, no, I've, I've no. I said I, I, when when you were giving saying you oh, tribute, believe, I yeah, yeah. them up because people were commenting. You know, so. Um, yeah, sorry. It's hard, to, it's hard to get back into the, the thingy of the ask us anything, the funny questions and all that with, with thingy. So, yeah. Yeah, but you know what? You know, someone said to me today at the um, at the uh, after, I, I don't want to call it a wake. It was a celebration. Someone said to me, I was getting a pint and someone come up to me and he went, don't you drink too much. You've got Friday night pint tonight. And I, there was a part of me that was thinking maybe we shouldn't do Friday night pint tonight. But I was thinking, do you know what? Isla was all about having a laugh and a joke. And as people were saying in the speeches today, she was always laughing and joking. So do you know what? This show, this show is dedicated to Isla tonight. You know, we're having a laugh and a joke. You know, that's what, that's what life's about. Isla lived every, you know, every day smiling and, and that. So that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do tonight. All right. This is a, a very uh, topical question. Worst sign ever signings West Ham have made that you can remember over the years. Cool, oh, fuck now we got that's another three hours. <laughs> that's 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 just showing it. That's just showing itself. I think. Oh, yeah. let's, let me just have a think about Avram Grant. Yes. <laughs> oh, Mido is my worst it's signing. Savio, isn't it? It's got oh, to be Savio. Awful. Yeah, Savio. Um, the most Benny 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 was pretty awful, wasn't it? Marco Bugas. Ah, oh, no, yeah. Bugas gets a pass because he snapped Gary Neville. I don't care. He gets a pass. Yeah, it's got to be me do for me. Um, Roberto? Yeah, well, if I don't, don't say that name, Lee. <laughs> well, I see people say Roberto. I'll tell you about it. What about, what about um, Tell Ben Ahim as well? Mm. I, think yeah, I, think I, was... I always thought people sometimes go, oh, no, no, but I, I always thought Bar Morte was pretty bad for us. He was one of them players. I, I was. We were saying this the other day. He was one of them players that was so bad that people started to like him. Yeah. He, do you know what? When he first started with us, he wasn't that bad. He got that long injury, didn't he? And then he come back and he was just dog. But I remember. I remember him, him scoring against City at home in his last game. I think for us. So, um, I'll let him off. Yeah. TT Kamara. Oh. Yeah, he was bad. Mido. No, oh, Mido. Don't. Don't, Roger I, don't, I don't agree. I don't agree with Phil Brown. Hilaire weren't that bad. Ah, oh, Warren Star said one chop. Come on, I love one uh, chop. No, Carlo, one, chop one, chop right. oh, no, one chop was all right. Zaza, I, I, I think, I think you're going to laugh, and I know I'm going to get. Don't healthy. say hell yeah. I think he is. I think no, no. money paid against what we got. I think he is. No, I no. no, honestly, I do. I, I still do. I think I'm, I'm sure you're clickbait. You are. You just. I'm not you clickbait. Need to go another I'm not channel. Clickbait. You need that's to what, That's what I think. That's what you I need think. to start doing another channel with Nicky Hawkins hates hell air highlights discussed. <laughs> Jake, no. Jake, Jake, double no, honestly, uh, to, to, look for the money we paid against what we got. I think he's the worst. I really do. What was it? Right, who's the one? Um, he's probably still backing up, backing up now. Who was it? Roger Johnson. Roger, that was it. Yeah. Nah, to be <laughs> fair, like people were saying, Savio was fucking terrible, wasn't he? He was like. He was, he was about 11 million quid when it was like a record. I remember right? Tavio when he come on and he got the ball and the first thing he done was fall over. And I thought, right, we'll give him a chance. <laughs> and then he got the ball again. He run down the wing and done exactly the same thing. No, thought, they, oh, they, they, God, they, God. The fucking thing is, they made us think he was going to be the new Rubinho. I know. That's what we, 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 we wanted the new Rubinho, but we ended up getting Rubinho. Yeah. <laughs> oh, fucking hell. Well, Scott, what's that one? Put that one up there, Triple X, Triple X. Sandy Clark. Do you remember Sandy, Sandy Clark? Clark? I remember him. Always used to say, he did score the odd goal, but he just always seemed to fall over <laughs> when he scored. Nino says Jack Wilshere. Mark says Beecham. 
Kimbo says McKnight. Uh, no, got... Roberto was worse than the McKnight. Paolo Futre. Do you know what? Paolo Fugge was the one that retired and then signed for another club the week after. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, he refused to play against Arsenal because John Moncur had the number 10 shirt. Yeah. Uh, Jay Beecham and, and MacArthur. Yeah, Jay, Jay Beecham signed and then went, oh, he was homesick. Like, Oxford's only like an hour and a half up the motorway. <laughs> I, I think that's Radichoyu. I'll tell you what, I've got a good... Um, Manuel De Costa and Kovac. Nah, nah. I actually, I actually Man, like Man, Manuel De Costa was one of the most underrated players we've had. Hmm. I, he I was like him. Quality. I was bit there of, when he scored at Hull away. Bit of a nutter though, weren't he? Yeah, fuck him. That's what we love. Yeah, he was a, uh, like, Gary, like he ended up being a bit of a lunatic. But I, I'm telling you, Manuel De Costa was one of the most underrated players. We, I thought Manuel De Costa was fucking brilliant. I'll tell you what. Here's a little. Uh, this is getting a chat going as well. Uh, it come out well. It didn't come out. We all knew, but twenty three years ago, uh, the other day that we since we signed Parlo De Canio. What's your uh, what's your memories of Parlo? Uh, can't believe it's twenty three years. To be fair, I still remember his debut at Wimbledon away when he had all white kit on. Within two minutes, he was snapped and he was muddy. And uh, what a great <laughs> what a great player he was. Um, an absolute legend of the football club. Even though he didn't win anything with us, he just you know he just stole the hearts of the fans and. Um, yeah, we loved him, and yeah, I, I, listen, we've all got great memories of Parlo, personal and and like from the training ground and, and watching him play, and what a, what a player he was. Mm. Yeah, he's one of them. I mean, that there was, you know, it's not, there, there were times he he, he was sort of drifting out of games and that, but you know, when he when he when he did get the ball, you know, he, he's the sort of player that had you off your seat, wasn't he? My uh. I'd say my probably favourite memory of De Canio was probably scoring at Old Trafford in the uh, one nil FA Cup victory. Yeah. I think that that just because I remember we was going up there and back in them days you didn't have internet on your phone and things like that, so everyone was like, "Oh, De Canio ain't playing today. He's not travelling up north." And I remember going into Old Trafford, um, me and Nicky, and we see him warming up and we was just like smiling. He's thinking, "Right, we've got a chance today." Parlo's on the pitch. I am um, my best memory of him was towards the end because I loved him. He's my favorite player. He's mm. my favorite ever player. I used to, he's one of them players, you, you get them players like, and there's not many that come along that I would have paid the price of admission just to watch him. Not, not 45 quid like they want to charge in Europe, but no, but seriously, no, I would have paid the price of admission just to watch him. He was one of them ones where. I went and watched him play. I thought he was an artist with the football. We could I see him do things like in the corners of Upton Park and like right in front of me that you think you, you come away thinking, Oh my god, what a genius. How the fuck did he do that? You know what I mean? Like him and Sinclair at times, their link up play was fantastic. But it was that mm. that thing towards the end, um, when he fell out with Rhoda, couldn't get in the side. We, we you know, we're racing towards the, the bottom three. Um you know, Nick, look he, at that comment on the screen. Do you feel old yet? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I do, yeah. Um, but we're racing towards the, the bottom three. It looks like we're, you know, we're, we're destined to relegation. We're playing Chelsea, a very, very good side at the time. And um, he came back and we needed to win that Chelsea game. They was a tough team. They was a tough side at the time. And um, he got the winner. And... If if that if we'd have won the next game and we'd have stayed up, that would have been, you know, the biggest fairy tale I think would have ever. Because after team he was out the team, you never knew he was going to come back and all that sort of stuff. And he scored the winner against Chelsea, and that was that's my memory of him. Like my, my lasting yeah. memory against him is fucking mm. falling, he's crying and he's yeah. you know so emotional. And that's why we fell in love with Paolo. He was it was his emotion. He wore his heart on his sleeve, and he he fell in love with us, and we fell in love with him, and. You know, you always talk about the Payet situation, but it was always a, a one-sided affair. We loved him more than he loved us. But Paolo loved us as much as we loved him. And, um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. De Canio was just one of them players that, he, as soon as he got the ball, as Graham said, you're on the edge of your seat. You know, you you, you know he's going to do something. And he'll, he'll take three or four players on. He'll lose the ball. And then 
you was entertained by watching him screaming at people and shouting at the touchline. I mean, you can go back to that Bradford City game, 5-4 oh, at home, yeah. when he got, he got chopped about 20 times in a box and then he tried to sub himself off. And, and then he ended <laughs> up... And then him and Frank Lampard Jr. are fighting over the penalty. And, um, it, yeah, look, he's, he's, a, he's a great player. He's an absolute legend. And for one point... Seven five million. I remember reading his book, and um, he said that when he was having his medical at West Ham, he got a phone call from Derby County, and uh, he said, "Look, Jim Smith wants you." I think I can't remember the name of the player now. It was one of his Italian teammates, um, Stefan Aran. Is it Stefan Arano? I think it was. I can't was remember it, now. No. But was it Car? Jim, no, it wasn't Carboni, was it? Carboni? I don't know, but no. Nah, but Jim Smith was saying, "Look, we're double your wages," and he he just hung up the phone. He said, "Listen." You had three months to sign me. You didn't. Harry Redknapp, give me the chance. And that's that's what it was all about. He had a chance to sign for Man United. Alex Ferguson mm. wanted him. And he, he didn't want to go. He just loved West Ham. And the fans loved him. And he, he's a... Yeah, he loves it. Um, XO70 Pro says, do you know we have a cure for COVID-19? Yeah, Graham's got one in his cupboard. He mixed together a little <laughs> bit of Sprite and yeah. a little bit of... Uh, it's called... <laughs> it's called Night Nurse. It's, it's, it's called Double Spice Jab. And, uh, it's called yeah. Bu- Double jab and a booster. No, honestly, Graham's got one. He's got, he mixed up Sprite and Night Nurse. It seems to have done the trick. So. <laughs> yeah, look, Ken, Ken Ammers is going Stefan Aranio. Yeah, I was right. Knowledge. I right, have a question. Lawrence wants to know, worst FA Cup oh, well, It's topical, isn't it? It's topical. Has there been um, a few? Recent you know, years, there, I'd say AFC Wimbledon. There's three that... Not, not necessarily... Not because like we lost to lower league teams, but it was just hard to take. It was ninety four in the quarter final when we lost in the replay to Luton? That, that was a kick in the nuts. And then I think ninety eight when we lost to Arsenal on penalties in the quarters. That was an odd one to take. And then the following year we lost to Tottenham in the quarters. Hmm. I got to say the one a... that sticks in my memory the most is the the one in ninety one, the Forest game. I think that's the worst of things because mm. we didn't fucking deserve it. We got absolutely yeah, fucking uh, fucked thanks over. To, thanks to Keith Hackett, wasn't it? Yeah. Fucking Keith Hackett sending Tony Gow off. Mm. But, um, yeah, I'd say in recent years, AFC Wimbledon, yeah, mm-hmm. someone put their Forest 5-0. Um, yeah. Let's yeah, hope so have, uh, that's the thing. Is that, that's it, isn't it? That, that one where um, the Forest one where... where uh, had a nice put all the kids out, but there's been so many through the years of, of defeats to lower league sides. But mm. I think the worst defeat has to be the cup final. Mm. You know, it, it, that's, still, that's still the worst cup. defeat that I could ever that I could ever imagine because we were so close to winning it. Yeah, I've got. Um, I say I've, I've never, I've never watched any any of that game since that day. I can't. I can't watch it. Losing to Wigan. We, me and you were there for that one, Nick, weren't we? Yep. 2 0 Wigan. Grimsby, was that Grimsby, was that 3 0 or was that the league? Yeah, I went I went for the, the game at Arts Park, it was 1 0, and then we lost 3 0 in the replay. That was it, yeah. Remember that one? I think that was who's managing off it's Brian Laws, I think was somebody makes a good point to 2016, the one where we lost to Man United in the replay. Mm. Yeah. Upton Park. Yeah. I, I, I think, think I think if we'd have won that, we'd have won the cup that year. Yeah, I think you're right. Should have won that right. at Old Trafford, mate. Robbed. Yeah. Well, Brandon goes. Just looks like he's got a bit. Of, I haven't confirmed this, so don't take this as this is this is Brandon's words, not mine. Uh, lads, apparently X just confirmed that the 50 mil offer for was Rafinha, and it's been accepted. Well, we'll have to see what happens over the next couple mm-hmm. of days, then. You still don't, still don't solve the striker fucking situation because he's a winger. <laughs> a lot, that's a lot of money for him as well, I think. Nah. I don't think so. Peanuts, okay. Scott. For a Brazilian, 25-year-old. Nah, peanuts, mm. mate. We can we'll afford see. it now. We're massive. <laughs> uh, Daniel says, question from Kalen. Who has had the most caps for Argentina, Tevez or Zabaleta? It's got to be Zabaleta. Yeah, mm. I'd say Zabaleta, wouldn't it? Say Zabaleta. I'm going to go Tevez, so let's see who's right. Because <laughs> none of us know the answer. I would say Zabaleta. Didn't he captain? I'd, 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 I'd say Zabaleta. Tevez, uh, no, Tevez played from early, though. Yeah. 
Tevez was them early, was, and he was he was in the squad a lot all the time. He, he was barely ever injured, was he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a good one. <laughs> 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 Chris H says what characters from Only Falls and Horses are the West Ham fan TV boys most like he thinks Graham Trigger Ryan Del Boy and me Ron I'm my Trigger <laughs> Nicky you know what? Albert. I'm not even going to fucking argue with that that is spot on <laughs> move on I'll take that all day long yeah you would fucking say that wouldn't you I'm going to get the cat I'm going to get me Del Boy out <laughs> are you dares Rodney are you dares I ain't going to lie I think I'll take that I'll take that Start calling everyone Dave now. <laughs> Graham, you answered questions from two minutes ago. <laughs> just, talking, just talking about that one. What are you talking about? <laughs> we were talking about a podcast and you said something about a Canadian. You're saying I'm like, that was about fucking 40 minutes ago. You're the one answering questions from fucking... Yeah. Someone, not someone really. just said there, Dan would be Slater. <laughs> <laughs> Elias says it's going to be my 20 year old birthday tomorrow. He's looking for birthday wishes. Happy birthday, Elias, for tomorrow. Happy birthday, mate. Welcome to the 20 club. Even though I'm in the 30, nearly on the 40 club. But enjoy your 20s, mate. They don't last long. Yeah. See, it is Tevez. Mm. Well done, Kaylin. Uh, another one from Danielle. She says. What was all of yours first game and who did we play? 13th of February, 1995. West Ham 2, Everton 2, Monday Night Football Under the Lights. Tony Cotty scored two for us. You never forget your first time, Graham. <laughs> Mine was buried 10 0 and everyone scored. <laughs> Pretty <Yeah>. much. <laughs> Nick, weren't you on Sunderland or something like that? Yeah, Sunderland, 8 0. Yeah. Mama's, Mama's Norwich, 3 all. No, we got the draws, they got the wins. Well, at least we didn't lose. None of us lost on our no, first game. No. That's it. No, it wasn't 8 0. My one was 6 0, I think. No, I think he's trying to add a couple of extra goals on at the end. No, I, it might have been 8. I'll see you 6 and raise you 10. Yeah. Nick, I'm going to come back to that one if you put that She's one up. She's got six pound change. So Matt Matt Pal Matt Powell says that Ryan's younger, so Rodney, Nicky Delboy, Scott, Mike, Graham, Uncle Albert, and Dan is Boise. Yeah, but how can I be Rodney? He, he's like six foot four. I'm after that. <laughs> nah, the, the the first guy had it spot on. If you're the Red Bull crew, crew, who's who? Who's who? All right, I'm gonna go. Ryan would be the cat. Mate, I ain't even got a clue what yeah, any of you don't know what I'm talking are. about. Yeah. Ryan would be I'll, the cat. I'll take that. Ryan's the cat. Who's cat? Ryan would Who's be. Cat? I'm going to Google that. Right I'll be quiet. <laughs> Scotty would be uh, Rimmer, and I would be Lister because I'm a ah, fucking. Scotty. Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I knew. I thought I knew I'd get stuck with Rimmer. <laughs> it's, that's, to be fair though, Scott, that was his process of elimination. Yeah, I know. I know. Cat, it's Cat's got there. a bit of an Elvis quiff, isn't he? <laughs> I'll take. I'll take Crichton. He was. He was funny. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, I'll take that. He looks. He looks like he has a good laugh. I'll take that. I've never seen it before. Who's Rachel? Here's one for you, right? Triple X, Triple X, Ryan. Your thoughts on the rumor that EastEnders is going to be axed? Exactly what it is, a rumour. EastEnders is here to stay. Long live Albert Square. Come on, you Phil Mitchell. Yes, do, <laughs> do, do soaps get axed? Not yeah, really. I think yeah, Brookside did. Brookside did, yeah. Once they Crossroads. found uh, El Jimmy Corky and Dash on this. <laughs> El Dorado. El Dorado, that got, that got dashed. Um, but like mostly, like, but they're, 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 I think they're the exception because they weren't very good soaps. Brook, Brookside got axed. But what I wonder why it got axed. I have to look into that, but I, I don't know. But like successful, Shit. like I think Coronation Street has been going like 70 years now. Mm-hmm. Um, East Enders has been going nearly 40. Uh, Emma Dow, no idea, but I remember that geezer with a fucking moustache that goes around there like that, and then he's got green out on. 
That's the last time Jeff, I watched it. Jeff Dingle, wasn't it? Or yeah. yeah. <laughs> East End is eight foot. East End has got to be about 30, isn't it? No, I, I reckon it's it was. It started 83. Really? Yeah, yeah, they had their 30th right. anniversary the other year at the TV awards. So it's got it's to be just, coming up. It's just, to be honest with you, they're just guaranteed views. Mm -hmm. They're just guaranteed views, like for them, you know what I mean? Like, and to be honest, right? I, like, I'm not a fan of EastEnders. I'll be honest. I know Ryan's a big fan. I've watched it in the past, but I've never been right like, really a fan of them soaps. But my mum and all that love them. Um, when when I look at TV nowadays, they're probably the best thing fucking on in a saying saying because everything else is just left to reality, which I find is is lazy. And I don't know what we're fucking, you know, paying a license fee for after time. Oh, no, it's, it's getting a bit tasty now, mate. Phil no, Mitchell, Phil Mitchell's looking at like. Phil Mitchell's looking at life and they're, they're trying to get him to but Phil Mitchell's a been looking at something all of his fucking 30-year career in fucking his can't bang, They can't bang him up, mate. He's, he's Phil Mitchell, mate. He always wears a black shirt and he gets away with everything. So Kent, <laughs> Kent Ammer says, uh, viewing numbers is why Brookside went. Another one, Crossroads, if anyone remembers that. I remember yeah. that one. I remember yeah, Crossroads. I brought that back and took it away again. It was so yeah. shit. <laughs> uh, EastEnders was 1985. Yeah, I mean, I remember Crossroads, right? If this is the one, I remember they used to have sets and they used to like wobble, shake, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what, was his, what was his name in it? Um, oh, I can't remember his fucking name. What, now. Randy? He wore the Woolly. Yeah. yeah. Benny. Oh, what was his name? Benny, wasn't it? Or something Benny, like that. Yeah. Benny. Benny. Benny and Crossroads. Yeah, they, they used to shut the door. You used to see the set shake. <laughs> <laughs> like the walls used to fucking shake and fucking that. Like, it's fucking awful, like. Right? Good old Benny. Any more mm. questions? Get your questions yep. in. We're here for another, what? Well, I ain't going to say because Nicky just ends it when he wants. <laughs> ben Ben says, any plans for the weekend, lads? <laughs> there's no uh, West Ham. Hey, Any plans for the weekend? Um, Yes. Don't know what, though. Whatever, <laughs> whatever. No, I'm going to I'm gonna take me to a football-free weekend, so family weekend. Gonna take my daughter out and my wife, saying to eat tomorrow, a uh, little day out, and yeah, a bit of family weekend. No football this weekend. I'm going. I'm going over to watch Thames on Sunday. They got a cup quarter final, so I'm going to go and watch that one. Um, not really. No, Gray. No, no, nothing planned at the minute. So Grandma could be so, coming with me to watch Thames then on Sunday morning. <laughs> yeah, or or. Yeah. <laughs> Keep an eye on the channel because I have got an interview going up tomorrow that I recorded last night. So, yeah, then we've got some sort of content coming out over the weekend. It's always our went like obviously we we thrive off of match day content with fan cams, build up shows, and things like that. So, yeah, we've got to keep the content flowing to keep the subscribers happy, Scott. Mm -hmm. Scott and Jim this involved in the palais. Billy says, "Is Rafinha coming in because Bowen is going to Liverpool?" No, no, I, I, I don't think I can't. I, I, I would be mad to sell Bowen. Keep on the TV feed. Matt Powell says, Which Simpsons characters will you be? I'd be, um, hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Dr. Nick, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I reckon I'd be Mo. <laughs> 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 you'll be, you'll be, uh, no, you'll be, uh, Mr. Burns. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> he would definitely be Mo. Looks like Mo. <laughs> I am. Oh, Graham. Yeah, it's massively, though. <laughs> massively. <laughs> Scott would be the bus driver. You know, the one that's always like, <laughs> oh, yeah. hey, Bart, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bart, man. <laughs> Oh, uh, here we go. Uh, it's JD. Can we be honest about Mark Noble? Even though he's been here for ages, he was never actually good. If you had an op if you had an option to choose twenty years of Noble or twenty years of Scott Parker, who are you choosing? But that's just a ridiculous statement, isn't it? Because like, how can you say someone who's been in the first team for so long under how many managers is not good? <laughs> I mean, come on. That's that's just ridiculous. I, I'm not even going to engage with that one. I mean, look, Scott Parker was a great servant, but just remember, Scott Parker walked out and left. Uh, Mark Noble is like, he's, he's underrated. He does a lot off the pitch as well. And for someone to have, what, how many managers has he had since he's been there? Eight managers? 
always yeah. been in and around the first team. So it's ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. He's no, not yeah, just look, in the first team. Under about four of them, he was a captain. Exactly, exactly. And, and mm. look, he's, he's look. People look at players. Everyone thinks everyone's got to be technical and and things like that. But look, Mark Noble's been a great servant for this club. Um, and yeah, I, I don't. I'm not having that. If you're a proper West Ham fan, mate, you you know what Mark Noble. Still, is. The thing is, with some players, mate, it's not just what they bring on the pitch; it's what they bring off of it as well. Exactly. He, exactly. He encapsulates mate. everything about the club. Everything. Mm. He's 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 West Ham through and through. There's you know you talk to interview with uh, Jesse Lingard last year. You know he, he's the one that settles everyone in. He's the one that you know everyone respects mm. him. Everyone looks up to him. And let's be honest, yeah, right. His legs have gone over the last few years, but that was always going to happen at the end of his career. He was never the most athletic. He was never the greatest player. But there's, I don't think there's been another player in the last twenty years that's gone out there with more heart than him. Yeah, than the more, interview. With, the, the interview more I've determination got out, than him. Yeah, the interview I got coming out tomorrow. We talk about Mark Noble, so watch that and then see that person's. Uh, and and, and what I would Mark say Noble. about Mark Noble is, I forgot what I was going to say, but. <laughs> No, well, no, uh, it, it, you know, he just encapsulates everything. And, oh, yeah, what you do forget about him, when he was younger, he was a good goal scorer. He was like a good attacking midfielder. Mm. Now, he's got some very, very good and very important goals for us. And I think he gets bogged down a little bit by recent times. And I think we're all guilty oh, of it. I've been guilty of it before when he was, you know, when he was a regular and, you know, he wasn't playing that well, saying that he's finished. I've ripped that man more off more times than fucking <laughs> Dirty Den. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'll tell you what, I watched, um, popped up me on YouTube the other day. It was the Preston playoff final. And when Zamora scores, like, and, uh, I think Noble was warming, uh, warming up behind the goal. And he jumps on, like, he jumps on Zamora when he scores. He looks about 12. Yeah, yeah. But this is what I'm saying. Like, like, you, you, just, you, like, just being honest. Look, that's your opinion. You're entitled no, to your yeah, opinion. Look, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah, look, 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 JD, I know. Listen, everyone's entitled to their opinion, but you listen. You'll never see another not Mark Noble. You think you think Declan Rice is going to be there that long? He ain't going to be. Look, this. But the reason why Declan Rice, one of the main reasons why Declan Rice is still at the football club, is because of Mark Noble. And you'll see the respect that Noble uh, Rice gives Noble every time he comes on. He's the first one to hand him back the captain's armband. You know, and mm. and that's just respect. So. Noble gets a lot of criticism, but he doesn't deserve it. He's been a great servant. He's going to be missed. See, and that, that goes into Chris Mills. It, what he says there, do you think we'll suffer not having Noble around a training ground next season? I, no, I'll be honest. Be I think if he if he retires from football, I don't see why the club wouldn't keep him on at some I, coaching capacity. I reckon he's. I reckon he's already done all he's doing. His coaching badges. I reckon. So I think I'm, I'm I, sure I, he said he about, stay on, I think he'll stand at the club in some capacity. Yeah, I'm sure he turned around and said that he wouldn't play for another club in England. Mm. He's requiring from football, Scott. He's not going to play. Oh, it, no, yet. no, that, no. That's what I, I remember the interview. That's what he said. He wouldn't play for another club in this country. The he thing is, right, when, you, when you think about it, right? Well, now we're all, we're all West Ham fans on this channel. I, I suppose 95 percent of people in the chat are West Ham fans. You know, we would give anything to play one minute of first-team football for West Ham. Mark Noble, as a West Ham fan, has gone on to play over 500 games for West mm. Ham. He, listen, we all want to win trophies in our career, but some things are more important than trophies. You know, he has lived all of our dreams, all of mm. our dreams to go and play at Upton Park um, and just playing that first team for West Ham. I mean, I was there at his mm. debut. Uh, against South End, you know, and he probably thought that was his last game. He, he, he walked home after the game down the road, probably thought, I'll never get another opportunity. Mm. And look at him now. He's, he's retiring this season. He'll go out an absolute hero of the sure. club. I'm mm. sure he said when he was when he was a youngster and De Canio was at there, that one of the main reasons why he sort of didn't give up on football was because of De Canio. Mm. You know, it, it was, I'm sure he was sort of, uh, I'm sure I remember this interview where he, he was saying he was thinking like just jacking it in and, and not, you know, not going down, going to go and be with his mates sort of thing instead of um, playing for football. And he, the Canio was one of the people that, that, you know, made him carry on. But while talking about Noble, this is a question to go into. 
Best West Ham penalty takers and why? Uh, well, for me, the two best, uh, Dixon Ray and Stewart. Ray Stewart. <clears throat> No I, mean, I, I was in there and smash it in the net. Yeah, I've got in my time. Yeah, it's your Julian Dix. He, he just took penalties out. I think you should take penalties. Put your head down and smash the fucking thing. Mm. I think, think Nobs is up there. Nobs yeah, is, yeah, yeah, is, 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 is definitely up there. Mm. But yeah, I, w- I mean, obviously, I don't remember. I wasn't around in the Ray Stewart days. So yeah, I'm going to say Julian Dix for me. But yeah, Noble is up there. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I said uh, uh, what the two Graham said, and, and Nobes has got to be in the mix as well. Yeah, if, you, if you're in a penalty shootout and you've got them three taking penalties for you, you're guaranteed probably to mm. score the first three. Yeah. I mean, yeah, put that there, Glenn, uh, was Glenn Marshall's comment. Graham, I've got to get you logged in, mate, so you can put these up. Fucking hell. You can see it, it's just come up. I yeah, look right, at that, no, right, sure, like 1980. You know, literally the 89th minute of the quarterfinal against Villa. And then I think it was an injury time in the 81 final at Wembley against Liverpool. So, you know what I mean? Nerves are still. That's it. That's it. Philip wants to know, what is your favourite London Underground station? Mm. Favourite underground London Underground station? Waterloo. Busy. Mm. Mm-hmm. Nice pub. <laughs> Liverpool Street's good. A few nice yeah. pubs around there. <laughs> I don't. I don't think I've actually got a favourite underground. Yeah, stadium. I wouldn't say that I ain't got a favourite, but yeah, yeah. I'll, listen. Get off at Waterloo. Have a walk around the South Bank. Walk over the Westminster Bridge. Down past Downing Street, through to uh, Trafal- uh, Leicester Square. That's a great little walk. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. No. So, yeah. So I'll say. I'll say. Waterloo. <laughs> <laughs> ben wants to know what game shows would you be any good on I would and you know what I really want to apply for it because I am the bollocks at it catchphrase oh, I was just going to say that <laughs> honestly, honestly I am so good at it I am really good at catchphrase do you know, do you know what I've, I've watched the recent catchphrase right and I'll be honest they're more just sayings now <laughs> none of them are catchphrases no, 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 it's it's, it's yeah. just <laughs> I love it. I sit here on a on a Saturday night and we all play it and before they before my wife and daughter even get a chance to say it, I'm like bang. I'm, like, I'm on it. I'm I think pretty, I'm pretty, I'll be honest with you, I'm pretty good at catchphrase. I think I'll probably <laughs> panic under pressure though on the final one because when the clock's ticking down, I'll be panicking and I'll probably kick Steve Mullen in the face. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I used to like blockbusters. Uh, see, I'm good at that as well. I, I, can I say that I'm not one, but two times Blockbusters champion on West Ham Fan TV? That's two times. <laughs> I, I was. I always wanted to do um, Golden Balls. What, Bex? Golden you balls. wanted to shake Beckham? You don't remember Golden Balls with <laughs> Jasper Carrot, no? Yeah. I remember, I remember Golden Balls, balls yeah. Do you remember going for gold? Going for gold. Going for gold. I used to, I used to love strike it lucky with Barrymore as well. Yeah, that was good. That What's was a hot good. spot? Not a good spot. <laughs> a hot spot. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Or the old, uh, come on down. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> they were some good game shows. Right? Oh, we generation were, game. Um, that was good. Generation game oh, was good. People, People are saying the cube. The cube. I love watching the cube, but I don't think I could do the cube. No. That's too much pressure. What was the um? Oh, what was what was I one with I'll the cards? On just storm off. Eh? What was the one with the cards with Bruce Forsyth? Where to do higher and lower? Um, play your cards right. Play, play your card cards right. right. That was good. Higher, one. lower. Nothing for a pair. <laughs> um, now, 1983. Fury White went it on. How long till Fury bangs him out? I'll be honest. I know I never agreed the fight. I still don't think it's going to happen. I really don't. don't. Reckon? I know. I, I really don't think it's going to happen. I, I want it to happen because I think it'd be a great fight. It'd be a good, um, good um, experience for Dylan White. But yeah, Tyson Fury all day long beats yeah. him, uh, no problem. Dylan White, look, he's 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 proved it over the years that he can get in there and and mix it up. But he, yeah, Tyson Fury for me knocks him out all day long. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. Still, I don't think it's going to happen, though. 
No. The thing is, it's, it's with all this stuff going about AJ and like looking at take, probably taking a payday to you know, so he hasn't got a fight Uzik so he can get the fight with Fury. I just think if he does that, it just nullifies the whole thing of the fight with Fury. Because the good thing is, though, and I'm glad that it's over in this country. Fury, like Fury, be Fury fighting won. yeah, over here because obviously the last few fights he's he's been away. So I don't know where they're going to do it. I mean, I can imagine it'll probably be in Manchester, maybe. Um, I can't. It might be Wembley. It just depends. I mean, it's it's big enough fight to sell out Wembley. Uh, the British boxing crowd who uh, listen. We are the best boxing fans in the world. Uh, we love fights. You know, I've been at Wembley Stadium to see Frotch Groves and uh, Joshua and Klitschko. So I know what it's like to to, to be at Wembley and them, and them special nights. I mean, you you think singing Sweet Caroline at football is good. Mm-hmm. You go to a boxing event when Buffer, Michael Buffer starts that off and the whole crowd's going. Um, I think... I can see it, mate. If it is in Manchester, maybe they might even do it at Man United, like Old Trafford, because it is big enough to sell out a stadium. Yeah. I can't see it being an arena fight. But what a what a what a good the country needs something like this, uh, boxing wise, because yeah, we've, we've watched Fury win the titles, but it's been over in America. You know, we want to see our our champion um, here and defending his belts. But what a yeah. shock it would be if Dylan White beat him. Yeah, no, massive shot, man. No, I'm, I'm with you. I don't see White beating him. No, he, White, White deserves his shot. Hundred percent deserves his shot, but I don't see him beating him. And and you know, same as I don't see Joshua beating Uzik if they ever do fight. I think I think the next big fight well, he, after he White will to, be. He lost to Uzik, didn't he? Joshua. Yeah, that's what I said. I but I don't see him. I don't see him beating him in the rematch. I think I think Uzik's the better the better boxer, and and I, honestly, I feel AJ's dodging him. Really, really do because he knows he can't beat him. And as I said, I don't, I don't, I don't want to see an AJ Fury fight because AJ ain't the champion. He don't deserve to be fighting Fury. Listen, as, as a as a boxing fan, Scott, I want to see Fury versus Joshua because I want to see Fury. Um, beat Joshua. Um, it's a shame with Joshua because I, I really liked him when he first started. I really did. I went to, I went to, Same. I think it was like his first 10 fights I went to. Really liked him. That night at, at Wembley when he beat uh, Klitschko was a magical moment to see him do that against Klitschko. But mm-hmm. yeah, he's, he's gone down, he's gone down my, in my estimations in the last few years. But listen, Tyson Fury's a, a great champion and yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. That's how, I mean, you've got Kel Brook versus Amir Khan coming up. I mean, that, that fight should have happened six years ago. I mean, yeah. that's going to be a that's a that's a money maker for both of them. But yeah. we still want to watch it. I mean, we've got a lot of young talent coming through. Connor Ben, uh, Eubank Junior is on the scene. You know, where he's got a fight coming up. So yeah, it's gonna, it's going to be good. It's going to be good. Nick, yeah, did you put that one up? Yeah, sorry, I've, I've got. I got distracted because you're talking about boxing. Um, when do you think this 3 p.m. Saturday games will finally play on English TV? Why do I have to stream German sports channels to watch us? Um, it's a good question. Uh, soon, I would I would I say, as we move into the era with streaming, um, yeah, very very quickly now. Um, I th- oh fuck off, not the fucking handle. Um, I think the. Uh, the embargo will stop because I think because of the rise of streaming and because of the um, prominence of these sort of illegal boxes and these illegal, you know, these illegal TV streams and all that sort of thing, it's becoming more and more difficult to control them. Um, So what they, they need to stop, start doing is stop trying to control them and stop trying to shut everyone down. They're just wasting too much time. And what they need to do is to move to a subscription model where they can, they can, stream legally because I think they're losing too much money. Mm. The, pro- the problem is, is is that football in general is far too overpriced for watching it on the TV. You know, the it's fact that you... for everything. Oh yeah, of oh, course yeah. it is. But, but the, fact you have to, the fact you have three different platforms showing the Premier League. You know, you've got BT, you've got Sky, you've got yeah, it's, um, it's a joke. It's a joke. It's, it's a joke it's, to the subscriber. The, yeah. the, the problem is with with showing games at three o'clock is you'll kill the crowds at games. 
No, I don't believe that, right? Well, I don't think, yeah, I think you will. I think you'll see a lot of people not going to the games if they can watch no, it from no, home. No, I don't believe it because no, look, you'll, you'll, be... still get, you'll still get the hardcore going, but, but that's the goal. That's, see... but, but that's who go the hardcore do go. And let's be honest if you go across football now, um, you can, you can pick up a, any laptop, any phone, you can pick up a phone. I've done it, I've done it on the way to games where I've been late and I've been watching it on the way there. You can pick up any. Um, laptop, phone, anybody can watch football now. It's accessible somewhere. You know, any game, you know, they, they try and dictate these streams and all that. And But anybody can pick up, um, you know, the football on any device. You know, you've got people walking down the street that can be watching the football. I've seen it. I've seen people at parties watching the football. I've seen people at fucking on the bus watching the football. I've seen every on a train, everything. It's not, it's not killed the crowd. That, that was the fear when they first, you know, bought the, the television, the televised games out, that it was going to kill the crowd. Yeah, but no, I know what you're saying with the streams, but I think the question is, is when they're going to put them on telly? Because not a lot of people like streaming. I mean, if it was on, if it was on Sky Sports at three o'clock on a Saturday, that's different. They that's totally they different. They won't put them on the telly. No, no, that's what I'm saying, but that's the question. I, 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 no, 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 no. He said English TV. Now, I, I, I. I I class yeah. English TV as now being Amazon and Netflix and things oh, like that. No, no, you're, you're chucking that. The, 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 They'll never be on the TV. I, I said, I said this, I said this years ago when we was back in the clubhouse. I turned around and said that the future is going to be you're going to see games on Google, you're going to see games on Facebook. You're never going to have three o'clock kickoffs <clears throat> predominantly on normal television. It, no. it will come. It will come. There will come a time when. Sky and BT disappear, and you will get football being shown on Facebook, football being shown uh, on Google, uh, Amazon, Netflix, unless the Premier League bring out their own streaming service. I would say they're working on that. Yeah, yeah. But you're never going to get rid of the illegal streams, ever. Because at the end of the day, people don't want to pay money to, you know, as it, again... If if you have four or five platforms showing the football, you've got to play pay four or five flat platforms each time. And as I said, it doesn't doesn't drive competition in the sense of the prices get lowered. You know, it, it just they just hike up their prices because they've got the football because they've got to pay more for it. You know, the only the cheapest way you can watch football is on Amazon, but they have what two free games per club a year. You know, you pay you, you, some people pay like hundred odd quid to have um, Sky. Then they've got to add the BT package on top of that as well, just to watch. You, let, you know. let, let's be perfectly clear, though. We're going to be perfectly clear on this. If when them contracts come up for renewal again for Sky, for BT, and all that, if if Amazon want, they can just buy it all mm. without even blinking a fucking eye. They can just go right. Yeah, we're having it all. They won't even. It won't even make a a small indentation on what they make per year. They are a, they're a, they're the biggest company in the world and they're a powerhouse in mm. everything. You know, in the way they're trying to manipulate home delivery, the way they're trying to manipulate technology, they are a powerhouse in everything. They will not even blink an eye at, at getting them games. If they want them, they'll, they'll get them. Sky it- wouldn't even get close to them. No, but it, it, you you need you need this. You know you need a you need a market that's driven on competition. You need a market where the prices are the right prices and affordable prices for everyone to be. A, you, you want to annihilate illegal streaming? Drop the prices. Make prices affordable for everybody. Show yeah. every single game on the TV. You, I, I think in in a way, yeah, you are right with what you were saying. Right, it will affect the crowd a little bit, but I don't think it'll affect the crowd as much as what. They originally thought it would when when Sky come out and and all that. I don't think, think it means that bad. I think that's another one which they could look at, like because what B Rap Pack saying here, the future is clubs directly streaming live to us do in the USA. What that will do though is, you know, they would allow the clubs to maybe stream them, but what that will do is that will create huge, huge, huge divides in revenue because Man United are going to have. 400 million subscribers around the world and West Ham are going to have 1 million subscribers around the world. That, that's, the thing that's is, the... when, 
when when I went to America and I went to watch West Ham when I was out there, I went into a bar and they had every screen had every different Premier League game on it. Three o'clock kickoffs, mm. you know. So they do, you know. Nah. If you're in America, you're very lucky because you get to watch it. But, that, like, but that's that's the same. That's the same in Europe as well, mate. We, you can. I remember being in. Um, I remember being in Zanti in Greece, and I walked along the strip there, and it was. West Ham versus whoever, Man United versus whoever. You know, there was four games, four o'clock kickoffs in mm. one bar. You could watch, watch. They had four different sections with four different tellies showing every single game that kicked yeah. off at the same time. It was like it's like that in Egypt, mate. They had all the yeah. like in the hotel. They had, we're we're, we're, we're the only four, country that doesn't that them. doesn't show that doesn't show our three o'clock kickoffs. Our, it was good, all it was good watching. It was good watching a three o'clock kickoff in Vegas because it was only like seven o'clock in the morning. So time <laughs> finished. it's only half nine, and you got the rest of the day left. Yeah, but that's 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 the thing. It is it is you know it, it will change. I, I I said I just don't see I don't see it being on terrestrial TV. I'm like Nikki. I think it will move to the just the streaming services because and and Facebook because they're the powerhouses now. I don't think Facebook will get it. I think it'd be Amazon if anybody. Yeah, Facebook are, are a big old company, mate. They can knock a few. No, they're, they're a huge company, but even them, they're a huge company. They ain't got a fucking candle to Amazon. It all depends if Amazon want it. Yeah, exactly. If they want it, they'll get it. And they've got any money in the world, they can name a price and they'll be able to pay it. Before they start buying football, they need to employ some decent drivers. <laughs> they, should, they should start treating them better and they might get some. Do you know what, right? I'm really surprised Amazon haven't dipped their toe in buying a football club. No, oh, time, time, time will tell, mate. Idea, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if it would be like Amazon bought a football club and it'd be the first football club where you can order shit from your seat. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be in your absolute element. Then, be all... no, it, wouldn't, right, it wouldn't surprise me at all. I can imagine you halfway through a fucking game, you get a delivery of a parcel of an Xbox or something like that. No, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Drone right to your seat. <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me. It would not surprise me at all. But yeah. Any more? Oh shit! Sorry, Chris Mills got one up. Uh, what does Karen Brady actually do for a salary at West Ham? Um, she's got a pay rise, isn't she? I think she's more the day to day affairs of the club, isn't she? The business <clears> side <throat> of it. Um, I'll tell you what, though, I know she gets a lot of uh stick in that, but speaking to Isla's granddad today, they said they got a nice letter off of Karen Brady, um, obviously about Isla today, and they said it was a really touching letter from uh, it was a personal letter as well. It weren't one of these ones where the, the uh, PA writes it up and that. It was from Karen Brady. And uh, I think the club have been brilliant with uh, Isla and, and what they've done. And that includes Sullivan as well and Gold. So I know they get a lot of stick, but um, take away all the football business, what they've done personally for not only I, but a lot of people. Um, but yeah, they was really touched by the letter from Karen Brady. But as what she does for her salary, as Scott said, day-to-day -day business, she does the shit that Gold and Sullivan don't want to do, really. I don't think she does enough for for the salary she gets. She got a she got her toe in too many fucking got fingers in too many pies, I think. But then again, I don't really know. I don't sit in the mm. office, so I can't say I can't say what she does. She's a very good business person. And as I said before, sometimes she takes the flack because you know, that's what she's paid for. She's not paid to worry about football side of things she's paid to look at the business side of things and apparently she's very good at that exactly mate you don't know and where's your curtains <laughs> uh, took, we took the curtains down we're changing the color of them so we had the leak in the ceiling obviously uh last week um and it was leaking all around like the curtains and we was changing them anyway so we just took them all down uh so now I just walk around with me dick out <laughs> I, I hoping the neighbor sees me yeah, pervert next door. <laughs> <laughs> you pervert. Is that pervert from West Ham fan TV? Pervert. He's a pervert. I don't know, I don't know why you live next to people from Bristol, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what, mate, you ain't far off. But there we go. Well, you're a pervert, or you live next door to people from Bristol. Oh, Graham, done you, mate. He's done you. <laughs> Ray, a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. You know how it goes. <laughs> 
<laughs> Graham, when you back at football, mate, I've missed you. Uh, I should hopefully have my last physio on Tuesday, hopefully. I've missed, you, I've, missed you to get, I've missed you trying to get four yards near me, mate. Apart from that time when I've got a lucky Ricky after you and you called me a... <laughs> I hate people like that. I hate players that get lucky deflection that goes their way. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're normally on the same team anyway. Yeah. Doing our little one-twos. Yeah. I mean, I set you up for an hat trick uh, when you last played. You did. Yeah. That was about three months ago. Didn't return the favour, though. Megan, Megan wants to know best or and worst pundits. Ooh, I, I like the best I like, pundit. It's Keane. Yeah, I like Keane. I mm. like Neville. I like Carragher. I like Michael Richards. He just cracks me up. He's yeah, I'm, I'm not too. I think the BBC like have got some real shit ones. Like, I'm not really keen. I like Lawrence and Danny Murphy. Like Who Mark Lawrence? Yeah, he always puts. He always. Of course, he's been on the BBC since fucking. He might not be on there, but he still does stuff for the BBC on their website. Always puts us down to lose. Uh, yeah, it's, someone's just said there. I was going to say that Graham Souness. Uh, I don't really like him. Um, not a fan of Rob Savage. Not a fan of Chris Sutton. Yeah, Jamie Redknapp's a bit hit and miss because sometimes I think to myself, yeah, he's decent, and then he'll say something, and I think, no, you shit. Ian Wright, yeah, Ian Wright's brilliant. Yeah, Ian Wright's quality. I, I don't, um, I don't agree with this one. Oh no, I like Joe Cole. He's good. I like Joe. Uh, I Rio, Joe Rio's pretty good. bad. I was just about to say Rio. Yeah, I think uh, from what I've said, I haven't really seen much of Joe Cole to be fair because obviously he really does the European games for West Ham, and we're usually at the games. But I've seen him and Colton Cole have got a little partnership in the uh, mm. Europa League games, and from what I've seen, he's he's come across as all right. But um, yeah. Yeah, I think I think I think um I thought I wouldn't is is a horror a pundit. I don't think he I don't no, think he, he does. he's a prick. Yeah, massively, massively. Yeah, she, I, yeah, I agree, she really is. Uh, uh, horror was barely a footballer, let alone a fucking pundit. Yeah, exactly. Um XXX says when any of you go on naked attraction, uh, no, no. <laughs> for a big man I've been short changed, I'll just leave it like that. You can, yeah, no, nah, definitely not. No, hundred percent not. No. I'm trying to find a button on a fur coat. <laughs> no, I think I will show a little bit of cheek, just a little bit of ass. Go on. Uh, can like, you wish like, Kylan's football team luck for Sunday? Hashtag United Tigers. They are playing West Kiv. If you like, like, why are they all called like tigers and lions and shit? Lions, tigers, and bears. Uh, good luck, Kylan. Oh, good, um, good luck. Good luck. Kaylin. Good luck. Beat the lions. Uh, is hashtag United, United Tigers actually hashtag United? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah, that's the junior yeah. team, isn't it? And their junior team. Yeah, yeah. well, good luck, mate. Good luck. Uh, I think Ken last Adam time just... I spoke to him when he came over to us, I think he scored a hat trick that day. So go and get another get, get four this week, Kalen. And mm-hmm. uh, the apprentice is shit this year, full of reality TV wannabes. I think ain't it like that every year? Oh no, this year is terrible, mate. Honestly, I, I, I sit there and I think to myself. There's 12 people in it or whatever, and eight of them have got to be actors. They can't be that thick. They can't be that thick, honestly. Yeah, uh, especially people like when they're meant to be business people. I've always thought that to be. They had to make, right? They had to make the other week a non alcoholic drink, and he chose vodka, lime, and soda. You can't can't recreate vodka and that taste. (laughs) So it was literally just. Lime and soda. soda. <laughs> <laughs> like made then. Oh dear. Um oh talking about TV, right? Anyone ever watch Dexter? Yep. Yeah. No, I've seen any of the new ones. I've seen so I've seen I'm up to episode four of the new ones. I'm up to episode five. Ooh. I love it. I do. I think Dexter was shit ending. From the first series, like really bad, 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 bad ending. Yeah, it, it, it sort of lost its way, though, didn't it, towards the end? Yeah, I think oh, most of them things do, though, yeah. because what they do is that something is really popular and they they flog it to its dead. Yeah. Like, they, yeah. you know, they, they try and become, like, because he, he, he nearly got caught in series two and it didn't finish till series eight. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, and it, it, you know, after a while, you just think, now, come on now. 
You know what I mean? There's only so many times you can get away with it, but the new ones are really good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you haven't seen it, go. Uh, the best season I think is one with a Trinity Killer. Yeah, number four, series four. Yeah, that'd that's be the honest. best one. I, I, mind you, I like the, one of the last ones where you had that geezer that used to make a run around the maze. Do you remember him? <laughs> like the lab room. That was good. That was I, good. No, I like I like the um, I like the invention in the killers and all that sort of thing. Mm. And the, the, this one, this one, this. This one's a bit boring, I'll be honest with you, up to this yeah. point, but they've got a good story arc. But yeah, it's good. It's a good one. It's good so far, anyway. Yeah, that's it, mate. <laughs> oh, they'll see it. Oh. I'm ready to go when you are, boys. So Yeah, it's been a long old day, mate. Um, yeah, I'm ready. Oh, we've been on for two hours, 20 minutes. Yeah, it's, it's nearly 10 o'clock. I want to sit down and watch a little bit of telly before I go to bed. There's up in the morning and... Uh, Back in the gym. Back in the gym, Gray. Back in, you're back in the gym. I, I've been doing really well. I've been doing really well. I can actually look, see my jawline again. I'm starting to see it. Uh, Gary Lucas says, bring back Olash. You're just the guys to do it. Mate, I couldn't produce a book if my life depended on it. <laughs> did you start, did you start yeah. getting that Olash? So it's quality read. I'll give you a sheet of A4 <laughs> with St. Real on it if you want. Um... <laughs> I don't think Olas will ever be back. I don't think the guy that, that you know, no, I think Gary Olas. made that. Gary made that clear, didn't he? That he didn't want to go online digital and things. And yeah, yeah, yeah like, and 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 to be fair, I think the fans, I think the fans, things dying out a little bit. It's, yeah, everything's yeah, got yeah, more it's, digital nowadays. Yeah, yeah. It's people like us. Yeah, we, yeah, we're, 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 no, we're, we're sort Nicky of, ruined Overland and Sea. <laughs> put, put out a teacher and sell it on the website. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think, you know, I think it's moving on a bit, which is a shame. I used to like a little bit of Olas. Yeah, yeah you know, I, used to, I used to um, get it now and again. Didn't buy it all the time. But, yeah, I remember it as a kid getting it. It was like, uh, it was like, um, I remember, I always remember when I used to call like Dion Dublin the Maltese head and things like that. And <laughs> yeah. Take the piss out of other players. But, yeah, no, it was good. Yeah, one of my mates used to be one of the sellers. For a while, early nineties. Well, Mike the Pudding was. Yep. I'm, I'm sure. I'm sure his old number saved in my phone as Mike Olas. Yeah. Pud pudding <laughs> drop. <laughs> yeah. Right. I've got the outro ready, lined up, Nick. Yeah, I'm ready, mate. Uh, thank you very much for watching this edition of West Ham Fan TV Friday Night Pint. As I said, Ryan will be back tomorrow with an interview. Uh, do you want to reveal this interviews with? Nah. All right, we'll come back and tell us after the show, right? No, might, <laughs> yeah, be, might be me, could be someone, could be Justin Timberlake, could be anyone. Um, but yeah, he'll be back tomorrow. With an interview. It's a good one, so so do look out for that. Um, we'll be building up towards Kidderminster next week. Um, transfer deadline day show, which is going to be absolutely fucking pointless if we don't do nothing in the next couple of days. But we will be back with that as well, trying to look at... Hopefully, we'll get something done. I'm, I'm, I'm confident we'll get something done. So we'll have something to talk about. Um, but, you know, whether it's going to be what we want or what we need is another thing, isn't it? So, but, um, yeah, we'll be back. We'll be either elated or we'll be devastated. So uh, I'll put that as a title, elated or devastated. There you go. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so you can join us for that as well. And as I say, we'll be building up towards Kidderminster Harriers uh, next week in the FA Cup. Um, and, yeah, that's that's it. Um, anything else to say? No, nah, it's been a great show. Very enjoyable. Um, laughs, emotions, debates. That's what Friday Night Pint is all about. So uh, thank you, lads. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been good. All right, then, boys. One thing left to say. Go on your hands.